It's time for Twig this week at Google. Jeff Jarvis is here. Stacey Higginbotham is here. We're going to talk about working from home, of course. The Pixel 4a, it's not going to be here for months. Uh, how we're strip mining the U.S. economy. We'll also talk about that electric taste machine and the electric smell machine you'll need to go with it and the confusion of hbo max launching today it's all coming up next on twig this week in google comes to you from twit's last pass studios stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication LastPass makes enterprise level security simple for your remote workforce check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 561, recorded Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Lions versus gazelles. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by LastPass. Prepare for the unexpected in your business with LastPass, trusted by over 17 million users and 61,000 businesses worldwide. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. And by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash twig. It's time for This Week in Google, the show where we get together with two really smart, cool, fascinating people, and we chew the fat for a couple of hours. Uh, I thought this show was long until I found out Joe Rogan does three hours routinely. <laughs> welcome, welcome to my friend Jeff Jarvis. Wait a minute. I got to get it. It's over here. I have it written down. <laughs> Jeff is the can, cat. Can you see me? The cat can, can you hear me? His camera am I, am right. I on? Jeff is, believe um, it or not, that guy. Uh, the, hello. Nice am I ceiling on? fan. You're on, Jeff. He's uh, the uh, Leonard Tau Professor for Journalistic Innovation at Did the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York, but he can't figure out how to use Zoom. I'm just showing off my hair. Nice hair. Oh, I think that's a nice a ceiling way. fan. And a lovely Isn't ceiling fan. It should be on today. It looks like you've got some heat down there in Bedminster. No, it's nice. 70 degrees outside. Oh, Two perfect. windows open. Birds Just chirping. Right. The fox perfect. is running by. The deer are running by. Yeah. Oh, how bucolic and He's idyllic. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is Stacey Higginbotham of the law firm. Bucolic and idyllic that she is. Higginbotham and Jarvis. She is the host of Stacey on IoT's IoT podcast. And, and the... Uh, uh, Major Domo at StacyOnIoT.com. I had to think of a term for you. Major Domo. I was wondering where you were going with that. What does that mean? The, he the head of the house? I think so. Yeah, something like that. The person in charge. Hello, Stacy. Hello. I'm glad to see the printer's back after your jaunt with the fancier Skype types. Oh, yes. You, you guys don't rape plants. <laughs> Y'all don't rape the llamas every week. I'm sorry. Did, did Andrew come and re repossess the llama plant? Oh. Uh, they actually belong to Anna, my oh, daughter. Oh, that's cute. So you borrowed them I from guess. Anna, but you had to give them back. Did you? Well, you know, we had to plug the printer back in. Yeah, you need a printer. Because you still print. Do you really? What do you print? Uh, my daughter prints her and I print... <gasps> I've been plant I've been printing floor plans. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh oh, the big move is coming. When do you move? End of the month, uh, June something or other. Oh, so you're gonna take the uh, months uh, or the rest of this month, all three days, and the first parts of June to remodel. Theoretically, I mean, it won't all get done, but yeah, they're gonna like rip out carpet. They're gonna put some floors in. Nice. They are gonna do some. There are literally no cabinets anywhere in the kitchen, so what? those won't all be ready. But what kind of savages lived there? I don't. People who did not cook. <laughs> yeah. Hey, as minimal as kitchens go, I love it. But yeah. I'm like, where? Where did they put anything? I can't make queso in here. Exactly. What are they I can't, there was no microwave. How could I melt oh, the cheese? Oh. Oh. Well, good. Well, I'm, I'm envisioning Stacy with an iPad, and she says Wayfair, and she clicks so the. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom would tell you that I am far too elitist for Wayfair. Yeah. 
<laughs> Your mom would be right, I suspect. She's like, is this one of your elitist luxury uh, purchases? And I'm like, yes, but it's the wire cutter best pick, mom. Yes, see, 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 see. You know that is a New York Times publication, you East Coast elite snob. I, I do. Yes. I do. Um, well, good. Congratulations on the uh, the new house. What do you do? What do you use to print your floor plans? Is there some special software we should know about? Y'all, I have been playing with software from, let me get the name of it right. So I've been playing with Modsy, Modsy, M-O-D-S-Y. Um, and then I've also been playing with software called Icovia, I-C-O-V-I-A. Oh, this um, Modsy looks pretty sweet. So Modsy is really interesting. It's a venture-backed company in San Francisco. And they actually have done a lot of deals with companies like, I think, West Elm, uh, Creighton, Barrel and CB2 and all of those. Oh, and Wayfair, look. Um, but some companies, so like CB2 I have a lot of, and Creighton. I have a lot of Pottery Pot Barn stuff. I like the Pottery Barn stuff. So you can go to, if you go to Modsy through one of their sites, what you'll do is you'll pay them $49 or $99 and they'll do a room for you. Oh my God, that's um, good and for an interior design. It. Holy cow. Well, caveats. Here are the caveats. Yeah. If you go through one of the... Uh, companies that are going to obviously put stuff yeah, from that a, company. A lot in of the West Elm not, stuff. Not totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you get an, you get a credit towards merchandise that pays you back from the design. But they, they put other stuff in there and there's there's different price categories and it's lovely. So I'll see my Creighton daughter, Merrill. we're doing Love my it. daughter's. Yeah. That's, this is really interesting, Motsi. So you you haven't decided yet if you're going to use them or their design or you're just, so you're just playing I with it? I use their design for my daughter's room. Huh. I'm probably going to also use it for my study. I've been I've been thinking about paint swatches, but this is probably not this week in Stacey's interior design no, journey. No, but this I think this is actually very <laughs> – this is perfect for the show because what this is – I mean, normally you would hire somebody to come in. And uh, she, it's usually a woman, would say, well, we, I, you know, tell me about your vision. And she'd do a des interior design for you. It'd be great expense. They, they have deals, just like Monzi. They have deals with the uh, furniture supplies. In fact, we have a, a furniture store in town. You can't go in unless you're an interior designer. They won't, you know, right. they don't want riffraff off the street. And uh, and this is, this is like a much more, I think, a, obviously much more affordable uh, way to do it. And uh, I bet you it gives you as, as good a result, maybe even better because you have more control over it. I'll tell you in two weeks when they're they're apparently redesigning the spaces right now. So hot. Everybody's in oh, their yeah. quarantine and they're like, yeah, help, nobody, help. Yeah. This is the so, contact free interior design. Well, the other thing we Normally. found out is our okay. we have a second freezer in the refrigerator and the in the uh, garage. It died. Uh oh. You cannot get freezers of no. any sort anywhere. Yeah. Right. And yeah, that every, is true. Everything bought out. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah. It's everybody popping their crowd cow meat in there, which, by the way, good service. Oh, wait. Crowd I cow? Look, I'm giving crowd cow. Um, you, it's crowd sustainable. cow or crowd, <laughs> crowd cow? cow? Crowd cow. Your crowd's, your crowd's sharing a cow. Oh, yeah, I basically. see. Um, it's a local meat, and they, they deliver, they deliver a beef, but they also deliver chicken and other fish. I was going to say food. <laughs> little, little pricey. Little it is, bit it is pricey. pricey. Yes, but it's it it's local is the thing. It's local and local sustainable. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's local to us in Seattle. Me, oh, maybe it's local based on your zip code. Yeah, let me put my zip code in and see. Because uh, the truth is we have a lot of farms in our oh yeah so here's the local farms delivering to us Kagoshima Japan Floresville Texas Cordova okay, Alaska <laughs> Charlottesville Virginia Silverton so it's not that local but it's okay this is not small farms small farms Tenants Haba Fisherman's Co-op Tenants Haba Maine yeah that's kind of cool so I remember when I was when I was a youngin we went to visit my grandmother uh, Mabel Lee. In Lewistown, Illinois, oh, and uh, she had a farm. She didn't yeah. live on the farm, had a farm. And her side of beef that she'd get for her share of the beef from the farm versus the farmer would go into Augie's meat locker. 
And we'd go up there on a Saturday and say, Augie, uh, well, I feel like a few tenderloins. Can you cut those off my beef? And Augie would cut it off and then wrap it up with the best sausages, warm mm-hmm. sausages. Oh, mm-hmm. they good. So, yeah, you had you had shared community meat storage. Huh. Meat and meat storage. I'm sending this link right off to my lovely wife for both. Mod the, C the and Crab Cow. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, nowadays, and we're very fortunate. I want to say this is... You know, this is obviously upscale, but we're fortunate that we don't have to go shopping, that everything can come to us now. You know, yeah. we don't have to go out at all. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope you all are equally fortunate because it's scary to go out there now. We, we were walking around town last night. It wasn't exactly Lake of the Ozark, but there were, <laughs> there, you know, there were, there were places were open and people were dining and uh, there were. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. People were excited and happy and, and, you know, it was Memorial Day. And weekend. close and breathing on each uh, other. And- you know, I think that what they're trying to do, and I guess this would be safe. First of all, for instance, there's one restaurant, weirdly named Ayahuasca, that... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you go there and throw up. I'd but be all careful right. about what I'd eat there. Anyway, they have uh, indoors and outdoors. There was no indoor dining. It was all outdoors. And it looked like they had spaced the tables out sufficiently. But the waiters coming to your table, there are lots of, I mean, there were maybe 40 people in a, in the outdoor patio, maybe not that many, but t- there were quite a few, 10 tables were filled. So I don't, it makes me, I'm just, maybe I'm just chicken. I just, Lisa and I oh, look I at am. that and go, let's go home and have dinner. We just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Oh, I'm, well, yeah, again, my wife stole, let me go to Taco Bell drive through That's shocking. Maybe she likes you, Jeff, and wants you to survive. <laughs> or maybe she just has good taste. I, I don't know. There's I'm making Jeff. my own. So Google. It's not hard to make a bean burrito. Let's be honest. So bean and cheese burrito. So I'm I, able to do you that. You could probably do pretty close to the. Yeah, it was Taco Tuesday yesterday. We have, uh, you know, we do our taco night. It's not that hard. Google uh, will be reopening offices July six. That seems a reasonable time frame. Uh, However, not everybody will have to come in. Um, Sundar Pichai says, we're not going to be entirely remote, but they have offered workers $1,000 for uh, home equipment. Not not specifically computers, they all have that, but for like furniture, uh, home office supplies, things like that. Is that enough? I will tell you, my... Well, I was going to say, my steel case... So I have a steel case office chair that I love in... I sit in for like 50 hours a week um, and that's like a $700 yeah, chair. So, right. and then my sit stand desk was, I don't know, like maybe 500. I can't a remember. Thousand doesn't now. seem like that much. Yeah. It's expensive to get office even, furniture. I mean, yeah. Cause I mean, this is not like going into office Depot and buying a chair that you're going to, you know, curl up in and get back problems from. Right. I don't know. I have a steel case too. I love it. Actually, it's a really nice chair. Uh, yeah, it's heavy, yeah. but good. <laughs> uh, and here's a, a comment on that Fox Business story by Mr. Trump is the best MAGA. That's awesome. Well done, Google. Happy to see American companies doing right by their employees. And then Google's founders were Jewish. Okay, I'm just going to stop reading Fox okay, Business. Yeah, stop, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, why? Why are you reading that? It's like, don't read the comments, especially not on Fox Business News. I think I'm hyperventilating now. Um, oh, that's true. Scooter X points out that lots of chairs are easy to find and reused chairs are oh, not yeah, hard to find. Oh, yeah, it's cheap now. You can get an Aeron. Well, it used to be in San Francisco, yeah. Aeron chairs. You'd find them on the street free because <laughs> all yeah. of these startups had gone out of business. Um I expect us, Sunar Pichai says, I expect us to need physical spaces to get together. I think that that's not unreasonable. Uh, while probably many of the engineers and coders are perfectly happy to be, you know, introverts and happy to work at home, there's a lot to be gained from collegial exchanges of information. And I think, I would bet you, we've been talking about this too, because we have a lot of workers at home, that in time we'll maybe like... Some people maybe can stay home, but we'll have like Friday, everybody will come in or something like that. We'll have a lunch date or something like that. Well, So so I watched the entire uh, Zuckerberg 
I don't want to get ahead of us, but I watched the entire Zuckerberg uh, announcement about working because they decided to make the town hall public, and I just happened upon oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, what did he and, do? And, and so it was, well, it was very interesting because it was very Mark, very serious. Um, and he was trying to be open about things. And some, you know, the, everybody's headline was, you move, you're, they're going to lower your pay. But they pay now based on location. Um, so that one thing seems he said so was, weird to me that that they would take an engineer making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in Mountain View, and if he moves to Boise, they'd cut him to seventy five. That seems so weird. I was thinking about it today, preparatory to the show, and 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 it wouldn't be hard as ever with Facebook to just to say it differently. Here's the salary for this work, but if you live in a place that's expensive, we'll we will pay give you more, you more yeah. rather than saying we're going to pay you less. Yeah. For leaving, well, people are smart enough to figure that out. I know, but these are engineers. So, <laughs> let me, because I am very curious. So, as someone who's been a remote worker for over a decade, and I've worked for three different companies that way, there are so there are tax implications for workers, and I they, we're not talking about that. But like for example, when I worked for the Deal, which was a New York company, and even for Fortune, when Time Inc. was in New York. To avoid paying New York City taxes on my earnings, so state and city taxes, I had to be located in Austin for the benefit of my employer, not just me. So oh, there's some it really just interesting. Be your choice, right? Oh. They had otherwise, I would have to pay taxes. Wow. And living in Texas, and the New York freelance taxes are awful. awful. Yeah, I was like, I do not. Well, I was a salaried worker, but yeah. Um, so there, there, no one's really talking about this, but I am really interested in how that changes, you know, like the internet changed state tax laws, you know, how we, we've had this big debate and there was this period of fluidity. There are lots Especially of sales tax. Yeah. Saying. Sales. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Sales tax. There are lots of states who tax workers who tax, you know, a company based on their workers and they will tax you if you're just floating around in Idaho because it's fun for you. So and Zuckerberg so made think, a big point, Stacey, of saying uh -huh. very he – went, he went at some length of saying that you have to say where you are and there's going to be like an audit of that. This is very serious because otherwise you could get in trouble with the taxes. We could get in trouble with the taxes and you have to – you know, you can't say you're – you know, you, I guess you can't say that you're living in um, expensive New York when you're actually living in inexpensive Maine. Mm-hmm. Um, and that so he made a sense, point of saying that they're going to uh, audit you on that and, and, and verify. Yeah. And it's a tax He also thing. said, he said, you know, he tried to argue that we may not save money with this. And and I know people are rolling their eyes, but but he had made a few points. First, in the short term, he said, definitely, we're going to, you know, if we're going to fill a 25% and have more space, our space is very inefficient. But then secondly, he said some people will end up traveling more. Because back to your point a few minutes ago, Stacey, um, was that people will, or maybe it was your point, Leo, um, it was your point, Leo, that people will want to come, they'll, they'll be expected to come in on a regular basis. Rather than having off-sites, they'll have on-sites, yeah. the way you put it. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think, that, I think that will be the case. You'll need to, because they, uh, Facebook does off-sites constantly, constantly. Um, and so I think that the people's, you might go live in Vermont, but you're going to be flying to California a lot. Hmm. Yeah, that makes, and that's that makes sense. that's true. Um, when I was editing at GigaOM, we had to plan an offsite, and I was in charge of that as the editor. Um, and we were a remote first operation, so yes, we had people in California, but we had most of our editorial staff was actually in different places around the country. Overall, I think it was cheaper, but yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My people in and house them. But we just turned, basically, we then turned the sites into retreats. So then everyone just went to a place. And you can yeah. do room blocks and things to make that less expensive. But, yes. Was it considered a uh, benefit or an, oh, no, I've got to go to the damned off site? Well, you know, it depends on how we were doing. And where the, uh, yeah. like, like, the off site is. Yeah, we we used to do them at like Carmel, a Carmel yeah, by the sea, Carmel yeah. by the sea. We're so all that was to nice. Hawaii. We never went to Hawaii, no. but and we did one in New Orleans, and that That's was good. probably inexpensive, but yeah, good. I'd go. Yeah. Um, and we liked to. I mean, it was nice to see each other because otherwise we didn't ever see each other. We were just mm -hmm. all virtual on Slack, and we were tight. Like that's one of the tightest groups of people I've ever worked with, but. 
The you tax, know, we didn't the tax see each stuff other. is really interesting because mm -hmm. this, you know, I mean, states and localities are very, and the federal government for that matter too, very good at getting their, their quote, fair mm -hmm. share of taxes. And they don't, you know, that's a really interesting issue. And I hadn't really thought about it, but I'm sure that there are tax consequences to Facebook as well. And, and California will want to tax those employees, even if they're living in Idaho. Because they're working for a California company, it's complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. And it was no fun. And you know, I've been seeing ads. I don't know if you've seen these. You no, you haven't because you're not in California. But there are ads all the time uh, on CNN and other channels uh, to fight the California freelance law. They have an ad. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a woman who uh, she says, "I'm a real estate agent, but I but I deliver for DoorDash." <laughs> And uh, and or Uber Eats or somebody a Grubhub, and uh, it's great because I can set my own hours and uh, and then a tight close up and dramatic music, and in this time this is the only way I can make money, and the California state legislature has decided I don't deserve to have this freelance job, and then there's a big long disclaimer at the end, paid for by Uber Grubhub DoorDash, you know. And uh, I don't know what I don't know if there's a petition or they're going to do a ballot. I would suspect they're going to try a ballot initiative uh, to to. It's to terrible change. for the news businesses. Terrible. Yeah. Well, we you know Aunt Pruitt. We hired a guy uh, who was a freelancer for Tech Republic. He was living in North Carolina when he moved here to California. Tech Republic said, "I'm sorry, we can't use you anymore because of this California freelancer law." Oh, because he was in California. He was all oh, right. Yes, but you uh, hire is Ant not? He's full time for us. But he also had another side. Kid. He wanted a freelance for Tech Republic. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I thought all of us. I was like, oh no, this is the worst way to find out this. So, I'm what not, that he's not that he's not working for us? <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I thought. No, I thought you were trying employee. to obliquely reference. No, no, no. He's an employee, and that's you know he, we're in California. We play. He pays California state taxes because he's in California. But I guess he was, I don't know if he was filing more than the 35 articles a month or what it was, or maybe just my, my sense, I don't know, but I mean, the Tech Republic loves Ant, as we all do. My sense is they just didn't want to deal with the, the mess that Where California are they based? has created. Kentucky, Louisville. Tech Republic? Louisville. Wow. So they have, wow. So as, as someone who hires, well, okay, let me rephrase that. I don't hire freelancers. I have, I have Kevin as a contractor. Um. The way that employment law is structured is really hard for small businesses, especially oh. if you're hiring someone from another state. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, and as a, when I want to hire people, like, or like pay freelancers for things, luckily I, I'm not impacted by anyone's, I, I'm too small of a job for those people. But like, I totally believe in paying good rates for my writers because. Oh, and I'm sure Tech Republic was paying him well. But the California oh, freelance law has nothing to do with how much you're getting paid. It doesn't refer to that at all. It's merely No, I know, but a lot of them a lot of them pay like I mean at Kigo oh, oh, oh I, know. I was so embarrassed to quote our rates to people. Yeah, it was no, horrifying. No, I know that. Yeah. But well that's what was Dr. Morbius in chat says, Oh, so Tech Republic was exploiting him. I don't I don't think so. Uh, and that's the issue, and that's the same issue with this woman, the real estate agent who's driving delivery for Grubhub, if the worker doesn't consider themselves exploited, they say, for various reasons, I want this freelance job. I don't want a real job. Um, you know, maybe her spouse has the health insurance and she likes to set her own hours. You could think of lots of reasons why that'd be legit. Why should the state of California assume I'm being exploited? And yeah, I've talked well, to tons. Every time I'm in not, an Uber. You don't, go ahead, Stacey. You don't make laws around individuals who happen to be at the, I don't want to say protected, who are less at risk. You don't, you make laws to protect people that are falling through the cracks that are at risk. Absolutely. So and you're the making law those was laws. Around, was to protect Uber drivers. I mean, Uber Right. Drivers. It's to protect people who don't have access to right. health insurance and right. who are being exploited. The fact that this one poor woman who may or may not even be real feels pissed off because she happens to be in a great position well good for her but she has to recognize that there are a lot of people who aren't and if we don't fix this at a bigger level at a state level then you then those people continue to fall through the cracks 
and we're stuck where we are today, which is not well, awesome. What, okay, anyway. that's fair. But what do you do about the harms that that creates for a whole the class of them, people like, say, uh, freelance writers? Though, so those should be addressed individually in the law. Or maybe you look at those harms and you say, well, here's here's what we're trying to do. Either we adjust the law or it forces people to to adapt. I mean, forces companies to adapt in that space. Or they say, we don't want to hire anyone from California. And then a bunch of freelancers leave California. Yeah, well, that's a risk too, right? Yeah. I mean, laws are if they always, can. It's always a trade-off. Right. It's always going to piss someone off. Yeah. In fact, uh, the thing that really pissed people off. Okay, first of all, these ad campaigns are paid for by Uber and Lyft, so yes. <laughs> so it pissed them off, and and rightly so because it was to protect their workers who are gig workers and are not given the courtesy of real jobs. However, uh, they did in the law make exemptions for just kind of randomly for certain jobs, like they attempted yes. to address the harms, but they left out journalists. So yeah. <laughs> That's because the journalists don't have great lobbying power. Apparently, that's my real problem. Is it all has comes down? Well, the to publishers that. do. The journalists don't. Well, there you go. Now, meanwhile, let's go to Switzerland, uh, the land of this of the what is the the land of? I don't chocolate. Even, chocolate. Uh, cows. Cows. Watches. Banking. Advice. <laughs> the German language Neutrality. paper, uh, Tages Anzeiger. I'm sure Jeff would do that better. Tages Anzeiger. Anzeiger. Tagus Anzeiger reports that Switzerland's top court has ruled employers are required to contribute to employees' rent payments if they're working from home. I mean, That's honestly, what we have, we do, in fact, do this. We don't pay their rent, but we help pay our employees' internet. We actually have a stipend for them That's good of you. to cover additional expenses that they may incur because they're working from home. Plus, that's our fair share. Now, we didn't think about helping them with the rent. <laughs> we didn't go that far. Um, I mean, they still got to live, you know, even if they come. I don't know. Should we, I don't know. But they, they didn't they didn't change their situation because they're working at right. home, except you want them to have good access. I mean, the, the, the problem with the like way, 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 way back. I'm old enough to remember when you could uh, charge for some space at home off your taxes and not go to jail for it. Yeah, you could still do that, right? Well, yeah, I still but do that. Yeah. Stacey, do you they, do it? Um, I used to. Now it's my own company, so it's a little bit different. But when I worked for a company at their behest mm -hmm. in a dedicated office with a door where right. it was only used for work, yes. Yeah, of course. And you, and you, what but you do is you deduct is, that square footage off the total cost of your home square footage. That's right. fair. I think that's fair, and that's legal. But it's it's an audit flag. Is so it? My, it is an audit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I never. I oh, never yeah. got audited. Never, never got audited. Knock wood, always, knock wood, Stacey. Knock wood. I'm not, I no one's gonna get audited now. There's not even anybody home anymore. Knock wood. <laughs> Lisa renewed. They're uh, watching. We renewed Lisa. No, they're not We're watching. They're not watching. We they, Lisa <laughs> renewed her son's passport, and you have to send in birth certificate and social security card and stuff. And then COVID hit, and they never sent any of that stuff back. We got the passport, oh, but geez. they still have his birth certificate and social security number. And she's been calling and renting. There's nobody there. They're all no. <laughs> It's crazy. These are, as they say, unprecedented times. These but yes, are that is unprecedented times, but it is kind of hard if you're 17 yeah. years old and you don't have a social security number to take get your first job. I mean, she has a, has a number, doesn't have a card. So now she yeah. has to go get a new card. Oh. Google's CEO gave everybody a day off so that you could become the best version of yourself. <laughs> A well-deserved day off. He said it in an email to uh, his staff. I know many of us have been running hard nonstop for a weeks now, and it may be he was he was even even he has got the covids, uh, and may be experiencing some burnout. So I used TGIF, a company-wide meeting, as a chance to announce an official day off on May 22nd. Take the time to do whatever you need to do to prioritize your well-being. So there, that is a nice thing to do. I like that. Thank you, Sundar. In fact, I'm going to take this show off. <laughs> oh, I'm like, well, wait, I have. A... Now. It's like we have things to talk about. Oh, hey, good. Like Google. Hey, let's talk about Google. 
All right. Oh, we have been actually. I lied. I I just got so engrossed in the conversation about it's remote all work. about Google. We had a point. It related. <laughs> so we were supposed to get. We talked about this uh, last last week. We were supposed to get our uh, Pixel Four A's at Google I/O two weeks ago. Obviously, there was no Google I/O, so no Pixel Four A's. Now, John Prosser, who has become the go-to rumor monger. He says it was originally, the Pixel 4a was originally May, then pushed to June. It's now pushed again. They will come in just black and barely blue. That doesn't sound good. Sounds, sounds baby blue. Sounds bluish. like an SNM punk band. Uh, current plan for announcement July 13th. No 5G. Seems like they're ready to ship. The decision is mostly based on market analysis. So and they want the stores open again. Yeah, maybe. How many people go into a store to buy their Google phone? I just feel like everyone offers it online. <laughs> I think us Google people don't, but yeah. but to find somebody who's not a Google person, they've Aren't got they to buying see iPhones? <laughs> I mean, is Google really going to convince those people? Well, but that's well, why they're buy, they're, you, instead of buying a Motorola phone, you want it when Samsung the person phone. comes and doesn't okay. have a strong prejudice one or the other to yes. the Verizon store and says, "I need to get a phone." And there is sitting next to the iPhone a, a Pixel 4 at a good price, or 4A, I guess, not a 4. Um, in barely blue. In barely blue and just black and blue. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem good. Uh, and then uh, you want it to be sitting there because, honestly, I know we all order them online, but, but I think the vast majority of phones, you have to be in a phone store. I know that because... Okay. Wa the Huawei representative, when I asked, well, you could sell them direct you just because we lost the Verizon contract. She said, there's no point in marketing or doing anything else for a cell phone in the U.S. unless you're in stores. There's just no point. You won't sell any. And uh, and I, I think that's probably true. I think that the, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the things that killed Microsoft's phone ambitions is that even though they could get them into the stores, they were always in the back, and the store employee would never say, "Oh yeah, we got this Microsoft phone. Maybe you'd be interested in that." No, and that really killed it. Killed a very expensive business for Microsoft. So I think that that's the market analysis as we want. I think you're exactly right. Actually, let's see what Android Central says. Um, Andrew Martonic, why, here's why Google is delaying. Well, U.S. consumer spending in March was down by 7.5%. Uh, economic impacts. Amazon pushing its annual Prime Day from July to September. Uh, Google's hardware business is insignificant, so there's no scramble to get the Pixel 4 out and start making money on it. To put it simply, Google can afford to wait another month. The optics of a slow launch are in some ways more damaging than a whole month of lost sales on the balance sheet. That makes sense. Yeah. It's like having, it does. it's like don't open a movie today because you'll have the first weekend sales will be bad and then you sink do without we, a trace. Do we think that things are going to get better by fall? <laughs> we live, we all live in hope, don't we? I, I mean, honestly, I sit here and I, th I I'm like, I don't know. I'm li really thinking about this because I'm like, okay, um, well, you know who's really thinking, and I'm sure this is one of the reasons you're thinking about it. What do you do with the kids? Are they going back to school in September? Yes. By, uh, here, Where I'm at, they're looking at all the way back, which no one actually thinks is possible when they say that, or all the way remote or some weird hybrid. And everyone's pretty much going for weird hybrid. <laughs> I mean, it's like where like there's variations on like, a certain percentage of kids will go back to their classes and then they'll do online. Like you'll be in the building for some amount of time and then online the other time while other percentages of kids are in oh, the building. So that's, that makes sense. A 25% at a time and that way they could separate them out. And yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So that's one option. And then the other option is have them come back some of the time and do something like that, but also recognize that we're going to have to shut things down again periodically as cases rise. But the truth is we have no idea. Right. No. And I don't think, I mean, anybody who's looking at this and says, hey, we're going to open the economy back up and it's all going to be hunky-dory. I mean, we 
we've lost, is it 25% of jobs or 20% of jobs now? I can't even remember where we're at, but like those people aren't going to be buying new things. Yeah. Uh, and how many of them will be going back to work? I mean, a lot of these businesses are gone. Yeah. A lot and of that's, restaurants so, are just gone. They're not coming back. It's scary. I mean, it's really scary. It is. It is. Half of all of Hertz's employees have been fired. Some huge number. I think it was 14. I had no idea Hertz was in bad shape before. Yeah, oh, my gosh. They are like a COVID. financial engineering <laughs> wonderkin. <laughs> well, that's the thing. What you're going to also see is all of these heavily leveraged companies, and that includes oh, yeah. retail especially, are just, they have no resiliency. So it's just going to go boing. <laughs> a lot of newspapers, too. Yeah. The Hertz had $24 billion in debt before COVID. So I do like, what is this going to do to private equity? And I used to cover private equity, right? So I'm not like, I don't think it's evil. The, the, my, my knee jerk reaction isn't private equity is evil. However, the way that it's been handled from a financial engineering perspective of the last 20 mm -hmm. years or so, it's definitely skirted like the edge of, you're definitely pushing a business to the edge. And, you know, if they teeter off, that's all right. It's no longer your responsibility. I'm, I'm ignorant on this. You're the expert. So I'm gonna, is it the fact that they're so highly leveraged? There's so much debt. Is that the problem? So what, yes, the leverage is hard, but two, they go in and they, they, they bring out a bunch of debt, but they also pull a lot of the cash out of the business. So there's, there's the two, it's the two things happening at once. And what happens is you're running it as optimized and with as narrow a, uh, ability to to not fail resiliency. It's you're yeah. taking away all of their resiliency. It's the equivalent of just in time manufacturing. Yes, or just living. I mean, it's pay. It's living paycheck, living paycheck to, paycheck, to paycheck. paycheck. Which in good times when there are no bumps in the road is sensible because you're 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 very efficient. I don't think it's ever sensible. Oh, really? Because no. good times, well, good times are never going to, I mean. You know there's going to be a bump in the road, yeah. Right. Yeah. They're called good times for a reason, people. Yeah. It's not normal times. <laughs> now, so, so leverage. Well, I, is, I, I, I just want, Stacey, I want to add to your list, right? So they, they, in the case of newspapers, the hedgies sell hard assets. They sell the real yes, estate. They, they sell, sell their machines, real estate. They sell that. They, um, that's, the pull chainsaw, cash out. that's the chainsaw Al Dunlap. Dunlop exactly. approach, which is you buy a business, sell it off for parts. Right. Then you pull cash flow out, which newspapers still have. And then the real killer is you don't invest. Right. Obviously. But in terms of trying to think, oh, how can we save this business in a new reality? Well, if you don't invest in R&D, you're not going to get anywhere and nobody is. So those things mean and, – and, and so every major newspaper chain in the U.S. is now controlled by hedge funds Oish. or families that have had it. Ugh. So, again, I'll go to the business reporter here. How can you call that good business in any sense? It's not. Well, well. so it, it gets to the fact that in the last 50 years, we have stopped. And this, this even ties back to if you want to say Mark Andreessen's we need to build, right? We have moved from a nation that is focused on building hard assets to a nation that is really good at financial engineering. A nation of value extractors. Yes. I mean, we're, we're, it, we're strip mining the United States economy. Yes. And there is value in hedge funds. So prior to probably the late 80s, I guess, when we started getting into like a hedge fund, actually, like they would take a family business. And if the family didn't want it anymore, like some the younger heirs said, eh, I'm not into this. They could sell it, get out of the business, and hedge funds would do things like, you know, create roll-ups maybe or build help build that business for a while and then resell it to somebody who it made sense to sell it to, right? They were adding value in a way that now they're just basically extracting cash. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> strip mining yeah. is probably a yeah. yeah but but yeah. all right the heartless the heartless business person says some businesses deserve to go away and they I'm not do. saying which ones they are I'm not saying but they but they they are past their prime um so I just wrote a post uh, I wrote a piece for tortoise a week ago or two weeks ago which I went through all the ways we're screwed in the news business <laughs> and just revenue stream by revenue stream uh, and in and, and the post I just wrote I said okay here's some sprouts from the ashes it's going to burn down and we're not going to recreate what we had. 
and we're going to build things that are new and they're coming in small ways. There's village media, which, which Google and Richard Jenkins love for good reason out of Canada that runs good, basic local businesses. There's a company in Norway. Hedge funds I, don't, to. I agree with you, Jeff, but hedge funds aren't picking their businesses based on things that deserve to fail. Right. Well, what, right. Right. Well, <laughs> Uh, no, no, what they are doing, Stacey, is they're, is they're buying distressed debt, and the debt is distressed for a reason. Not always. So Not always. Not some always, of the distressed the debt that they're picking up is from prior sales, prior hedge fund investment. So, I mean, yes, there are businesses that should be failed but or should fail. One could take an analogy, though, and say that there are – there are businesses that were pushed to a place where they couldn't actually make the investments true. they needed to make. Absolutely and true. And part of the reason they're not making those investments is because Wall Street is rewarding the financial engineering and the quick extraction of cash. So it, an investment does take time. It takes time. It takes money. Look at like it, – and there are ways the government can actually encourage people to go back to that, like, you know, r and making it more tax efficient to invest in R&D as opposed to, you know, mm -hmm. shareholder buybacks. Mm -hmm. um, there, but, Yeah, go on. Would you invest in JCPenney? No, but JCPenney has been on the edge since like the 90s. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so at some point. But it wasn't the I'm internet I'm sorry for everybody who has a job there. I'm sorry for the people that are paying rent too. I'm sorry for their suppliers. But J.C. Penney has not been a going concern, as you just said, for a long time. But J.C. Penney was optimizing for cash extraction. Had J.C. Yep. Penney been yep. working, had the market rewarded investment and things, and they could have done it. And what will actually be really interesting is in the last, say, five years, uh, companies in the retail space that have been investing, right? So actual forward-thinking companies have actually been investing in – experiences in the store. So you think like at Sephora, you could get like, you buy stuff there and you get the Hydra facial and you go in and it's amazing. Or you go into like Saks and there's the spa. So high touch retail experiences has been the new thing. With COVID, that's all changing so rapidly, so suddenly. Do those companies, should they go out of business because of this? Even if they were like, let's say they're all reasonably managed, right? They're not on the, they've got resiliency. Do you think that this sort of event means they should go out of business or how, what do you think should happen to those? No, you're, you're right. You're right. I should not have used. I, I complain on the other side that the, the, no business plan is ever built on the verb should either way, right? Newspapers saying people should pay us. Well, only if you're worthwhile, neither should you say a company should die. So I, 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 I retract the use of the verb. Um, <laughs> Uh, but what I'm saying is some are all but hopeless, and so it's hard to expect anything but leeching them of their last cash and their real estate leases and such. And so that's what uh, – I worked with a guy in, in our business um, who, who warned me, and I was on an advisory board from the beginning, hedgies will do what hedgies will do. Mm -hmm. They will buy distressed hedgies debt. Will hedge. They will get rid of stuff. <laughs> they will do this stuff, right? And – and um, they're like a lot, you know, you might feel sorry for the gazelle, but the lions eat gazelles and that's what they do. And so we have to recognize that reality. Uh, so, yes, I retract my verb. Do you think it's a but structural you, flaw in our economic system or it's just an Yes, if you look at like use the lion and gazelle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We Ooh, have we <laughs> way more lions right now than we have gazelles. And right now we're in a in a wildlife ecosystem that – that gives the advantages to the lions in ways that maybe nature doesn't normally do. Right. And this is, we can only take this so far. The lions, like, well. Yeah, in, my, the, in my backyard, I have more deer let me, than wolves. And the deer are eating my shrubs. So I just wanted to yeah. say, say that. But let me just stretch the analogy a little bit. The lions have to be careful. If they eat all the gazelles, they're going right. to die themselves. And I've always wondered why this, you know, this... Uh, I think I don't think it's unfair to say this predatory capitalism doesn't understand that you can't keep doing this forever, or are they just so short-sighted that they just go, "Well, I'm going to eat until I get they mine." They can though, they because the government, one. the government, 
in some ways bails them out. They still have their pre preferred tax treatment. I yeah. mean, there's too big to fail. Yeah. There's a lot happening here that I'm kind of like, I, and, and look at now at how the government is like totally stripped, you know, the, the, the agencies in place that were put in place to help kind of, yeah, uh, yeah, the consumer the, it's protection board. The uh, yes, thank you. That I was like, God, that yeah. consumer something, something, something. Yeah. I, well, and I that's still big get it things, right, but, but yeah. yes. But that, no, I think that's clear. Uh, but but it's also it's self reinforcing because the reason things like the consumer protection board go away is because these people got so wealthy that they could buy, essentially buy off Congress to make tax laws in their favor. Therein lies the problem. And and so it's self-reinforcing. They they get more and more successful and then the, the 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 bonds are released and they can get more and more successful. And what you get is massive income inequality. What you get is a situation where you are very unresilient where you have a nation where not only have individuals not saved money, but companies haven't saved money. Nobody's prepared for the rainy day. The rainy day came and all the roofs are caving in. So who could have predicted? Well, I, I, obviously some people did predict this, but as a manager, I would defend a company for saying, how could you have planned for every exigency of this? You'd been, you'd been killed by your stockholders if you just held cash in reserve. But Stacey, you were raising but, your hand. You think you could have? You can plan. I mean, so in this is really an interesting thing. So remember when Michael Dell took Dell private? Um, the reason, one of the reasons he did that is because he felt like this was a time where things were changing and he wanted to make those investments. Um, it was also yes. partly my fault. Oh, you 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 talked Michael, Michael Dell into that? <laughs> no, I, I I caused Dell hell. What we talked about this? Dell hell. What's Dell hell? You don't, you don't, oh, we never talked about this? Well, we might have. I don't have much of it. Yeah, oh, okay. goes. A, <laughs> We've um, been doing this for years now. <laughs> in the early days of blogging, I complained. Uh, I'm sorry, I just, Stacey, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. I was, uh, go ahead and finish. finish you just want to take credit for finish. Michael Dell's going well, private. Well, no, I, I get blamed for it. By, <laughs> by the way, Stacey, Michael Dell took Dell private, but then didn't he then? He took it back public, yes. Go public he again? Sold off. Yeah, I, I, he came it, back I know to he the filed. company. It feels like yeah. it was a manipul a financial. Man I mean, I don't know. I'm looking at a distance. But it, it wasn't. A, like well, no. I mean, yes, there were. So he took it private because he wanted to focus without the short term. Yeah, he he wanted to focus on things. He yes. ended up selling off parts that had been acquired. Um, and and there, I'm not saying that all public finances or finance is bad. Right. There is a big role for capital and they deserve to make, you know, money for taking on extreme risk. I am by no means against that. However, we have become so short sighted. And what I like to think of is we have optimized far too much for short term returns. And it makes it very difficult to build anything. It makes it difficult to build resiliency. It makes it build, right. difficult to invest in R&D. And it's is Warren Buffett the counter to that? Sometimes. I mean, or he does well talking he, about it. He sold off his newspapers when he gave up. He does act, though, that like a value investor. Like, I'm not trying to make a quick buck. I'm investing in the company because of its fundamentals. Things I know. Dairy Queen. And it's, and it, yeah, Dairy Queen. And it's a valuable uh, company, and I feel the value will go off. And he's done very well uh, out of it. I don't know. I, you know what? If I knew anything about this, I'd be rich. So I clearly don't. Well, in the benefit of the market, I mean, the benefit, one of the challenges here is you will all, if you are taking a long-term versus a short-term company, right now you are going to make bank as a short-term investor, right? You, yeah. you will never lose playing to the lowest common denominator, right? right? The problem is you're going to look around one day and this is where we, I feel like this is where we are. You're, you're all at the lowest common denominator. And you're like, well, crap, how do we get here? And then how do we build value going forward? And that's, if we're not already there, we're I, close. I <laughs> sold all my stocks. I'm in just sitting with a pile of cash in my retirement fund because I don't know what the hell's going to happen and I don't want to ride it down. And uh, I know it's going up and everybody's looking, you know, Lisa's saying, oh, what, do you, what did you do that for? I don't know. Actually, she did it first. She did it in January, which was very smart. Um, I don't. 
I mean, I don't know if keeping your money in your mattress is a great way to go. I mean, you're older, so yes. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm I mean, so old that if I don't do that, I could be bankrupt before I have a chance to make. Yeah, it I'm back. worried too. Right. But I also the taxes so, I would pay right now if I sold everything would be horrendous. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's that's part of. I mean, and that's part of this is like we have divorced real risk, like actual risk in a lot of cases from the value that people are paid for well said. taking on that well said. risk. And part of that is because, you know, we've, we've gone to like securitization of assets, which means the original risk just gets passed up and down the chain for like a few more basis points. Right. And that's not sustainable. And it, that's, I don't know if that's we have those the will. complicated derivatives that all the my financial uh, and math wizards who got out of Harvard and MIT with their math degrees instead of going to work. Well, that's why school, Hertz is bankrupt. Went, yeah, they went to they, Wall Street and they created a bunch of derivatives, and no one knows how the hell it's, they work. <laughs> I know how they work. Except Stacy, thank God. I'm like, I'm like, as a former bond reporter, I know how. No, I'm glad you're work. here because I swear to God, I think it's just crazy. Crazy. In, yeah. So you want to hear in, my in Dell story? Yeah. What yeah, your Dell? Dell Actually, before you do, let's do a, a, a commercial. We'll come back with Dell. Hey. Health. I was going to read your article, Sprouts from the Ashes, but as you know, I've exceeded my medium limit for the month. So all I got was, give it's us. It's not on a buzz machine yet. I hate this. I, I normally put everything screen. on buzz machine a day or two later. I hate this. Are you are you windowing? Show my Jeff? screen, Jeff. Thank you. I can't read your article. It fades out. Oh, uh, hold on! I'll give you the link. No, no, no! It's the link, fine. The link on the on the rundown. Is, I think it's fine. I know. I've read all my free stories for the month. Yeah, you wasted it on Zoom cats. I wasted it. It's your <laughs> fault, Jeff. I wasted it on Zoom cats, which we will also talk about later. I'm gonna have to pay my five bucks just so we can do Zoom cats. Yeah. <sighs> You're supporting writers. It's a good thing. I'm supporting Ev Williams. I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, that was a good guy. Ad. Ev, <laughs> Ev, Ev helped start blogging. Ev helped start I Twitter. Know. Don't I agree. Uh, keep your keep your mouth shut. Ev helped start Medium for writers as penance. Ev's a good guy. Really? Was that the plan? The Medium was just you know he's not going to make any money on it. He's just going to give all the money to you guys. That no, was the plan? no, I no. think he wants to make money on it, but I think it's penance for for everything being short and quick. Yeah. One other uh, programming note: we usually do an after hours on Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. This is going to be a special one. We're doing an Ask Me Anything. We've done a few AMAs with various hosts. This time, it's Father Robert Balasser, Renee Ritchie, and. Somebody who just crossed the one millionth subscriber mark on YouTube, OMG Chad, host of OMG Craft. He used to be the producer for this show. Uh, now he's a big shot, but he'll be on our AMA. Again, that's this Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can watch live at twit.tv slash live, and then we'll put it up on the Twit uh, YouTube channel afterwards. AMA, Chad, Padre, and Renee. That sounds awesome. Today, our show is brought to you by LastPass. It's good to have LastPass in your back pocket. If you're a business, uh, you know, which thank goodness we were using LastPass Enterprise and, our, and then our whole company goes home and they're logging into our websites and our bank accounts and all the vital stuff from their house. I was so, I was so glad. We had LastPass. LastPass can be deployed quickly in the midst of any event to ensure your business keeps running smoothly. Every employee login is secure. Enterprise-grade password management. I mean, that's what they're famous for. It's what I started using LastPass for 10 years ago. I mean, that's, that's what we had was passwords. And LastPass encrypted them, kept them safe. And from a business point of view, LastPass password management ensures oversight of shadow IT and enforceable policies across all password protected accounts we enforce for instance two-factor uh things uh like uh, minimum password quality things like that but they've got more now and i love this single sign-on for instance it manages employee access also for it in a centralized view so it always has insight into who has access to what from where but your employees love it because there's no passwords at all they just say yes on their phone and they're in 
It's more convenient and more secure. LastPass also uses multi-factor authentication. So not just biometrics, not just fingerprint and face, but they also use contextual factors like geolocation, IP address, and that helps them make sure that everybody is, you know, the right person to use the right uh, resource. That's so important, and they do such a good job of it. By the way, you should remember anybody considering a password manager, LastPass does it right. They don't send or store the master password ever. LastPass doesn't have it. If they can't access the data, hackers can't access the data. Encryption happens exclusively at the device level before syncing to LastPass for safe storage. Only users can decrypt their data. They use 256-bit AES that's the same encryption used by banks and the military to store your password. It's just impressive as heck. LastPass protects everything, every resource in your business while providing a seamless workflow for your employees. Account access and passwords can easily be shared. And that's important. Employees are at home. You don't want them, you know, <laughs> sharing passwords insecurely. LastPass has it. It's built in. It's very easy. I love the SSO. I love the multi-factor. Multi you will, too. LastPass can make remote work simple and secure. So go to lastpass.com slash twit. Find out how LastPass can help your business stay productive and secure no matter what happens. LastPass.com slash twit. Thank you, LastPass, for supporting our uh, fine little podcast here. By the way, did you see that Google's going to put us out of business? They started a new podcast. Oh, probably the most boring podcast you can imagine. <laughs> Wait, what's the podcast? Yeah, Google launches okay. new podcast. It's called Search Off the Record. John Muller, Martin, Martin Split, and Gary Ilias teaming up to present a mixed bag of content. Sounds like this show. Oh, it's about to, we're a mixed bag. No, cuts. <laughs> of uh, Google Search. Uh, trending topics in SEO. Search Console features fun stories and more. Uh, and they promise they will share information that's never before been documented. Never before, such as... Be really geeky. Background, Stacey might like. Background information on the decision-making process behind launches. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's all. At I, least they talk about Google. Yeah. So they, they have an advantage over us. They actually... It's a, it's a show about Google. Search yeah. off the record, it's called. And I just thought I'd mention that. But one thing they don't have... They don't have Dell Hell. So if you go to the rundown, <laughs> the market cap slide, this is what I was blamed for. You were blamed you for you market laugh. cap. You laugh. You don't know my power. You don't know I don't. what I could do. All right. Let's see. This is a Flickr uh, post. Th so did you post this picture? I post. No. Oh. I posted in 2005 oh, my I complaint see. about my Dell uh, computer. And uh, it went viral, as we say now. There was no Twitter at the time. There was no Facebook at the time. It was just blogs. It was a wonderful world. And I complained uh, righteously. Uh, not that I ever do that. And um, it went crazy. Oh, that's and so, so funny. There and were, so there were uh, people with uh, torches and pitchforks behind me saying, yeah, what he says, Dell sucks. This and, was uh, 2005? Um, yeah. 15 yeah. years ago. What was your complaint, man? Oh, uh, the customer service. I had I had just had a lemon and I couldn't get it fixed and I was complaining. And oh, it was a mess. That, that and, feels right. And 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 so Michael Dell had basically left the company. You know, all but retired. And it wasn't because of me. Dell had problems. All I, I, I always say I was not an influencer. What I said resonated with people, and it spread like crazy. There were tons of stories. There was a Business Week cover story, and um, stock price did go down. It wasn't because of me, but I got blamed for it. And uh, so then I interviewed Michael. Then they did all kinds of wonderful things. They hired bloggers, a guy named Lionel Menchaca as the official Dell blogger. They hired uh, technologists to go solve bloggers' problems with their machines. And then uh, there was kind of a kiss and make up with Michael. I did an interview with him for Business Week in 2007. I love this. I'm like, uh, top story, Jeff Jarvis. Dell learns to listen. The blogger who brought you Dell Hell and set off a firestorm of complaints about the PC maker's woeful customer service thinks Dell has come a long way. Wow. So, you have a lot of power. See, Stacy. See, see? I'm very <laughs> impressed. The guy who brought us Dell Hell. I never, no. ever, ever uh, in all my years was able to put a company out of business. 
<laughs> it wasn't me. Much Dell, as I, Dell isn't out of business. Oh, that's as true. It, as okay. it but, I <laughs> but yes. Or affect their stock price for that matter. Uh, wow. Very impressive. I don't think you've ever told me that story, actually. I can't believe it because I used to, it's, I was I was known for it. You used to dine out on that story. Yeah, oh, did I ever? Oh, I got, I got, I got gigs talking, you know, yeah. And here we were just thinking you were a former TV, uh, TV guy critic. Oh, my God. Who complains God. a lot. The only reason I hired, I called Jeff to say, can you do this show, is because I used to read him in the San Francisco Examiner long before long ago. Del Hell. Long ago, <sighs> when my hair wasn't white. Um, this is actually kind of funny. Last week, or was it on Twit? We were talking about. I think it was on Twit. I don't know how you keep this straight. By the way, I, yeah. I, I would be I would be bonkers. I you tell us. I'll, I'll, see, I'll, I'll see, see if we remember. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about housing prices and how it's very expensive in Silicon Valley. There's a San Francisco Gate column uh, now. The Chronicle has their websites, The Gate. There's a column where they talk of, they find the most expensive, ridiculously small apartment in San Francisco. And they, like, this one's a storefront with a loft bed and a workspace below it and a kitchen the size of a postage stamp for $3,000 a month. And it's a great column. I love it. Um, so we were talking about it. And Karsten, who is, un I, I admit, stuck at home. He's not here. He's at home. and uh, We could have Karsten Kim. We could have him coming in to the joy of the show. He doesn't even want that. When he gets on Zoom calls, he's like silhouetted. He's got a big, he doesn't want us, he doesn't want anybody to see him. I don't know what's going on. He's something's, <laughs> he's growing his hair out. He's got vitiligo. I don't know. Something's going on. Anyway, um, he posted houses in, in uh, St. Helena, Montana, That's or Helena, great. Montana, where uh, near near his family a mansion, his estate where he grew up, here's so where one. where Facebook employees could now move. Could they? This is six hundred ninety nine thousand dollars, which I know to most of you sounds like a lot for a house, but here in California, this would buy you a one bedroom apartment. It's five bedrooms, Studio. five baths, forty five hundred square feet. It looks like the the Adams family mansion, uh, and there's a story that goes with it. Apparently. It's haunted. Look at this. It's got two pianos. Uh, no, I think that's, the same that just, piano that's the same piano from a different angle. <laughs> but it has two guitars. I'm easily confused. It does have two I've, guitars. I've been looking at real estate list. I'm like, oh, I see. I see exactly where Actually, this is going. don't you think this is a nice house, though? This is really right. nice. nice house. Yeah. It is not to my taste, but it is. Oh, that, well, no, that but, turret is well, really cool. You like the. Oh, the yeah. Look at the ceiling. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, see? Look, yeah, it's yeah, not look Michelangelo, but, you know, you could get no, somebody just... from Wayfair in there and spruce it up. Uh, yeah, it's a little knotty pine, isn't it? But it's a it's a classic Victorian. But here it is. Mm -hmm. This is Carson's explanation about this. Fun fact, this house is infamous for being where they fixed the election that got Helena to be the capital of Montana. That was so exciting, a little, Carson. A little piece My, of history. What a scandal that must have been. <laughs> I am amazed. Helena must have been a fire pit of politics. This one is just four blocks from where Karsten grew up. Whoa, other side of the tracks. Yeah, other side of the tracks. I'm not sure about the cement steps, though. We'd have to do something about that. That's very Helena, Montana. Finally. Well, it snows there. You know, you don't want to put too much money into brickwork. And then finally, this is the home he says, if I ever get Joe Rogan money, we, <laughs> we should move to it here. I, you know what? I would move to Helena, Montana in a heartbeat if it didn't you snow. You don't need Joe Rogan money for this. No, it's $828,000. Where, where, do where do Hank and John Green live? Right, One of them is in Indiana, but the other one I think is Montana, isn't he? Montana is pretty, but Lisa won't let me move there. She said you'd be bored. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Uh -huh. Beautiful bedroom. Now that's a bedroom, man. That, but they, I, you need a rotating bed in that that bedroom, if not. No one know. ever needs a rotating bed. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, unless, I'm now I'm now, down, I'm now downgrading no it. No one ever needs a rotating bed. This is this is uh, this is the backyard. Yeah, that's mm. that's, that's not awesome. No, I'm judging that yeah. and saying not awesome. It's Low a new minutes. show for uh, the Twit Network: House Hunting with Stacy and Leo. Here's the mountain you look out on. Or maybe you're on it. No, you're on it. 
I don't know. All Did I see is see the, the snow goes all the way up. It just goes, I just see 10 feet of snow on that thing. So, and so what? So you're isolated at home, just like now. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't be any different, would it? Right. Anyway, this is apparently Carson's dream house. Uh, so, on Twitter, so there was someone who was blogging. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can find it. Carson says, uh, if Twit ever gets its Gimlet Joe Rogan payday and Leo gives him a cut, Carson will buy this house <laughs> purely to spite all the kids who bullied him in seventh grade. <laughs> is he from Montana? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is this is his uh, hometown. Oh, OK. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. OK, here it is. It's on apartment therapy. It was published five hours ago. This Maryland mansion has a full holiday themed village in the basement. <laughs> the opposite like of what you, this was on Twitter like a day or two ago, and it is hilarious. Send me the link. I uh, want to see it. Oh, um, I'm, I'm copy. I bet. See. What would I Google here? I holiday. Google. Uh, go to park well, in basement. Basement. Probably that'd be enough. I mean, how many? How many two bedroom town home with basement okay. in Holiday Park? No, apparently there's a place called Holiday nope. Park in Newburgh, New York. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to get I'm scrolling <clears throat> down to the bottom where I could stick stuff. Other, oh man, our other is really long today. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're 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 just scratching the surface here. All right, I'm, well, well, we I'm going to, to oh, add oh, crowd oh, oh, Speaking of other, there you go. I knew this was going to happen. John Krasinski's down home. You know, yeah. not trying to make any money, just having some fun. Some good news YouTube series is moving to CBS All Access. <laughs> and this is the part I love. Krasinski will no longer star. It's like... You're kidding me. What are you... It's like when they took uh, Carpool Karaoke and they took James Corden out of it. Yeah. Viacom CBS is licensing some good news... Putting it on a stream behind a streaming paywall and taking John Krasinski out of it. <laughs> what did CBS buy? <laughs> They're morons. Oh Some my God. good news. Some good a little news. Bit. They bought the uh I don't know, the production value. That's what they bought. All right. I put the link in right under oh Jarvis. Oh my lord. Dillo. But they couldn't finish the ceiling? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, Christmas basement for sale. Oh, wait, you you don't get the whole thing, just the basement? No, you get everything, but Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, this Maryland mansion has a full holiday themed No, village. I think that's a, I think that's not the house. Oh, this is the just... the actual uh, Dickens fair. No, that's the, yeah, oh, okay. The oh, yeah, it's there not quite as nice. No. Not quite as fancy. Each picture, yeah, okay. And why is there a car? Is that the garage as well? And yeah, they didn't finish no, the ceiling. I see what you're no, saying. No, that's that's just that's part, of part of the scene move. setting. Santa's Jaguar. I Mar guess. Double I, yeah, feature I don't, platoon. I think it's fascinating. Oh, there are there are cars. Somebody put a lot of effort into this. Oh God, yeah. yeah. But you can't. I think there's. I think this must have caused a divorce. It must have. Oh, there's a whole bunch of cars in there. I feel down. like that couldn't cause a divorce because you know you—that's the sort of thing you you talk to your spouse about, and if you have that kind of money, you're just like, or yeah, okay. I don't know why Jerry keeps disappearing in the basement. He seems to be working on <laughs> something down there. And the house itself is—I mean, again, not to my taste, but it's not a terrible house. <sighs> well, let's go buy it. Four point five million. Ah! Whoa. See how much a holiday village will, will add to the value of your home? Yeah, Seven bedrooms, eight village. baths. Yeah. I oh think my. I think that's adding to the value. I think the holiday village is probably something you're like, eh. That is just... Oh, wow. Look at all the washing machines they have. They have two <laughs> sets of washing machines. Well, when you have seven bedrooms and eight baths, you got to have a lot of washing machines. A lot of sheets. I guess you have... They also have a rather grand uh, dynasty-style drive. Yeah. Oh, go to the go to the office the and you'll is... see the family portrait uh, over the fireplace. Yeah. Oh Lord, this is some crazy person's house. <laughs> so it, the the <laughs> kitchen or the bench. the holiday stuff starts on uh, fifty four. I'm having fun. Go go one more. Go I one see more. the. Oh, I there, see. Look at that sculpture. There you see. The, the the one person now keep going yeah yeah there here's the there family father there's the family i don't see what? a husband there i think that oh 
I'm, I'm, did she I cut don't him know. out? I don't did she know. cut him out of the picture? Yeah, you see? Yeah. You think that's the two boys or the husband just a surprisingly young-looking fellow? After oh. spending all this money? No. Maybe that's the daughter and the two sons. Did you ever think of that, Jeff? Oh, could be. Could be. Did you ever, did you ever think of that? Could be. That's true. That's good. Could be. Could Why be. is this fiddle right. under glass? Does anyone know? No. So you better not touch it or dad's going to be really mad. Anyway. This is, I thought this was funny, and since we were talking about crazy real estate, we have gone, this, well, this show has gone way downhill. I think I'm going to go listen to that Google podcast. Honestly, <laughs> there's a balcony over the kitchen. Yeah, no, you ought to have a balcony because you throw up an apple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, where do, what 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 happened here? Where where did I lose control? <laughs> Stacy's fault. This was Stacy's fault. That was my fault. I'm not. I'm not. It was gonna... actually Karsten's fault before that. Yeah. And my fault. Yeah, I don't that. take any response. I am not. I have take no responsibility at all. Just like the president, it's not my fault. Not my fault. Uh, so Facebook, Amazon, Google, Amazon. Amazon. You want to do some Amazon? <laughs> yeah, we already let's mentioned do it. that uh, Prime Day uh, is moving to September, so to you know, so it gives you time to save up some money. Here is. Um, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> no, that's too depressing. Um, Apple's, I mean, sorry, Amazon's local podcast play. Yeah, so that's a podcast story. So they're trying to get, I, I don't understand this. So they want to do like local sports and things. They also want new content for their devices. So it's not just podcast. It's also, and then there's also an internal fight that apparently Audible wants the podcast, but other parts of Amazon want the podcast. So they think podcasts are hot. I could see us be, you know, all here working for Bezos. Huh? Huh? They're using Wait, the so uh, Alexa fund, which is a venture arm tied to voice innovation to invest in local podcast companies. Localized so local news podcasts? Yeah, well, localized news, localized sports. They want to explore short form audio content that can be surfaced when users ask Echo for information about topics like news and sports. You know, I've actually experienced this. There's an Echo game you could play the question of the day. It's a trivia question. I started doing it. And there's a podcast about the question of the day. They call it a podcast. And it plays automatically after you ask the question of the day. You actually have to take steps to stop it. <laughs> that does not sound awesome. <laughs> but, it's, but it shows that what they're really looking for is audio content to, to come out of the echo that uh, associated yep. with what you're asking about. For instance, do you think they would make it exclusive to the echo? Yeah. Why not? Sure. If it's local, especially right. Cause the echo knows where you are. This is one thing podcasts right now don't have a very good local story. It's one thing radio did for years. In fact, the best radio I always Ooh. thought was mm -hmm. live local, you know, uh, we're in your town talking about the stuff you care about. And uh, podcasting could do it, but I've always never thought, had a way of doing it. You know, one thing I wanted, I, I, I tried to write business plans for this years ago and never went anywhere like any of mine. But um, uh, so Chicago City Bureau trains citizens to go out and, and cover meetings, and do things like that. If you if you brought me an edit, a half hour edit of the, of the best bits of the school board meeting in my town, I'd listen. Yeah. You were the only care. one. It'd have to be curated. No, I don't think curated. so. A lot of busy bodies. A lot of busy bodies. Yeah, you've got to edit it. it. <laughs> Make it five That's a well, long time. a five-hour meeting. <laughs> I, no, I know. I so, so I watch three-hour meetings online of my city council meetings because I find them fabulously well, entertaining. You two are pieces of God. You there agree. you go. Oh, I it's should totally podcast. make that into a podcast. <gasps> yes. See? Trademark Jeff Jarvis. Now, Got it's it. called hyper, per, hyper personal. You always talk about hyper local news, hyper yeah. personalized audio content, according to a person familiar with Amazon's plans. Now, here's what Axios is saying. Local advertising, local, which is it would uh, attract local advertising, right? You'd have Bill's Bagel Shop and, the, you know, the donut store on the corner. Local advertising is a $150 billion market, totally dominated by local radio, right? Uh, but Amazon. This is also why could do why it. Facebook started the stores, and this is why I wrote in that post where I put up a friend link so you can get to it um, about Village Media. So Village Media can 
haul in a million and a half bucks in local revenue for a local blog with a few employees. You know, now, I want to dispute stuff. this line in the Axios story where they say it's reported that Audible's efforts to invest in more original podcast shows with celebrities have confused podcast producers <laughs> due to the fact that Amazon Music also has plans to distribute podcasts. I just want to say I am not confused. Just, just gonna, we have figured what, that out. <laughs> I figured I could I could tell the difference. I understand. Um, so Spotify, a Apple's rumored to be working on not only turning News Plus into audio shows, but uh, but actually starting a podcast division. It's so interesting how when a category gets hot, everybody oh just jumps in, and I can't get a dollar fifty for this show, so I don't understand it myself. Spotify said last week it signed an exclusive deal. Yeah, that's the Joe Rogan deal. Apple wants to create original podcasts. And this, because more than one-third of Americans listen to podcasts every month. But, and I'll vouch for this, ad revenue for podcasts is still tiny compared to other mediums. That's because, according to Ben Thompson, who ought to know, podcast monetization is currently too decentralized. Do you listen to Ben's podcast no he just launched another one didn't he yeah he doesn't understand 15 minutes he doesn't know what he's talking about but okay fine uh there believe me it's not decentralized spotify's big time investments could help centralize monetization for the genre yes that's a problem centralize it in spotify's pocket apple has the largest portion of podcast listeners and that's also somewhat inaccurate it, almost half of podcast listeners use itunes that doesn't mean apple has them right it's a big difference. It's not. It's not a yeah, publisher. It's just a directory. So, eh. Anyway. Yeah. Eh. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Someday podcasts are going to be huge, and you will have been. You could say, <laughs> not. You won't be saying I'm the Dell Hell guy anymore. You'll say I'm the guy <laughs> that started podcasting. You could say that. How many years we've been doing this one? I don't know. Way too long. Five hundred sixty-one <laughs> episodes. Don't get, him, don't get him sad and it's bitter again. Come almost on. eleven years, Jeff. Almost eleven years. No, I'm not. I've For never been company. sad and bitter. For the company. No, no, you. This one. This is Jesus the five hundred sixty-first episode. Jesus. Even if we did fifty a, a year, fifty-two God, a year. God, you gotta be sick of me. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sick of me. <laughs> no, it is kind of and amazing way, that we've been five hundred sixty so times four hours each is a lot of it's podcast. A lot of hours. Time. Wait, these are not. Four hours long. They just feel uh, well, maybe they was, used was, to be, was, but with Stacy. No, no, no. It's, it's never. Been oh, it's actually gotten longer. longer. It's gotten longer. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, Let's now make that, it short again. You know what? I, <laughs> I now now that I know that Joe Rogan, hundred millionaire Joe Rogan's podcast, averages more than three hours. We're heading for four today, Stacy. I, I don't feel guilty at all. <laughs> I only had soup and bread. No, no, no. I'm going to need more food. No, we're, we're going to be done in a minute. I, 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 I'm not hungry yet. We're fine. But. Do we care that Twitter is la finally is labeling? By the way, they didn't label Trump's tweets about Joe Scarborough's assistant being murdered, which were blatantly bizarre and wrong. But they did label his tweet saying, Email voting is bound to be filled with fraud, which I think is less provably wrong. But for the first time, Twitter is going. They kind of did the next one. There was there was the Fuhrer, right? They didn't want the letter, and they, they kind of picked the next one. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah, well, and, we missed that. And, train, and they've so said we'll that anything that's about Facebook and Twitter both said anything that, that is defrauding people about elections is bad. So they could they could jump on that. So this is what you see, and I don't follow uh, Trump on Twitter, obviously, but. You'd get a big fact check label. Get the facts about mail in ballots. It doesn't even Some say. Some people said that may look like Twitter's agreeing with Trump. Right. It doesn't look like it's disagreeing. Yeah, that's um, not that's not saying And then the right wing has gone that Trump's threatening to shut down. Oh yeah, Twitter. he says that's it. We're gonna put them out of business if they don't fix and, their bias. Uh, the right wing is picking on individual Twitter employees whom I know. Uh, and, and finding any of their tweets that are anti-Trump and you saying this proves, of course, and don't they see the irony here is they're complaining about their freedom of speech being impinged upon, but then they're going after anyone else's freedom of speech. Oh, no, but the irony, are you kidding? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> Come on, Jeff. <laughs> um, half the Twitter accounts pushing to reopen America are bots? 
And the only problem with that, to my mind, is how media thinks that, oh, my God, America wants to reopen. And, and they've got, you know, 500 people on the street in an entire state and bots used as their as their uh, basis. 200 million tweets discussing COVID-19. This is from Carnegie Mellon. They analyzed them. Uh, in, uh, <laughs> half the accounts, including 62% of the 1,000 most influential retweeters, appeared to be bots. Non, not real people. There are automated retweeters. Who makes these bots? Do we know? Russia? Well, this is what Business Insider says. There China. Are few, China. There are a few I possible... I, like, I don't know. That's, I no, don't we don't know. know. Don't there are a few know. possible explanations for the surge in bot activity. People may have more time to set up elaborate bot networks during stay-at-home orders. I think that is true. Uh, the availability of botnets for hire has exploded recently. That's the problem. You can't tell if it's somebody trying to destabilize the U.S., if it's if it's just a bunch of weirdos. We don't, you just don't know. It could be but, Brad. But I can't. It could all I be run by Brad Parscale. I don't they could, see them. <laughs> yeah, how come you don't see them? Because I follow people I like and know. That's the, that's the problem. Oh, somewhere on Twitter, there's a bot. Yes, there is. Somewhere on Twitter. Yes, but a lot of people the retweet the bots. I see bots because people who I follow for their technical or some other acumen also tend to retweet those things. So they are out there, Jeff. Well, that's a larger problem then. Well, yeah, I think that's the issue for people. It's not that there are – it's not just that the bots exist. It's that people who maybe – like my journalist friends do not retweet bots, but – the people I follow in like cloud computing or maybe in the security space or Corgi space, very big bot retweeters. What? Uh, <laughs> Is that true? Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, but those I are like normal people who like breathe. Nor normal corgis. people are the problem because they, yeah, yeah. I see that once I got went back to Facebook, I see that a lot on Facebook, which is... Um, normal users don't aren't really distinguishing between, you know, anything. They just, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share that, share that, share that. Um, I think life would be better without Twitter, but that's just me. Uh, I know. Neither of you agree with me. I'm the only one. You're the only one. So here's some... <laughs> I like how you made that into a song. That's good. I'm sorry. It's our new... Uh, we're going we're gonna to start releasing a soundtrack. I think... Didn't they try briefly? They tried musical podcasts... Like for one like second. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Well, it was like the musical um, TV shows. Yeah, that didn't work very long either. Gone. You know what? You know what took true crime. Oh boy! If it bleeds, it leads, baby. Are we going to talk about true crime again? No, no, we're <laughs> oh, not. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to talk about the uh, fabulous, fabulous ruling uh, from uh, John uh, Coffinor of the U.S. District Court in Seattle. And it goes back to a arrest in May 2019 in Washington State. A guy was indicted on several charges related to robbery and assault. He was using a Motorola smartphone. When he was arrested, he says one of the officers present hit the power button to bring up the phone's lock screen. The filing doesn't say that any officer present attempted to unlock the phone or make the suspect do the same. Uh, in February 2020, the FBI also turned the phone on to take a photograph of the phone's lock screen, which displayed the name Streezy on it. L the lawyer for the uh, defendant filed a motion arguing this evidence should not have been sought without a warrant and should be suppressed. In other words, is they didn't unlock the phone. They just looked at the lock screen. Is that evidence that requires a warrant? The district judge said yes. Really? Yes. The judge determined police looking at the phone at the time of the arrest and the FBI looking at it again are two separate issues. Police are allowed to conduct searches without search warrants under special circumstances. That's probable cause, right? Uh, and looking at the phone's lock screen may have been permissible as it took place either incident to a lawful arrest or as part of the police's efforts to inventory the personal effects. So, and he then did say, I want to, uh, he asked the police to see if their search of the phone fell within those boundaries. So he didn't give them a complete pass, 
But he said there are circumstances that's part of the normal process. But, he said, the FBI's actions crystal clear and counter to the defendant's Fourth Amendment rights. The judge ruled FBI physically intruded on Mr. Uh, the defendant's personal effects when the FBI powered on his phone to take a picture of the lock screen. That is a search. The FBI did not have a warrant. It, it was unconstitutional. Good decision. Will it last? Well, that's the problem. Uh, you know, it's just one court, U.S. District Court in Seattle. Uh, it, is it a precedent? Ne I don't know necessarily if it is. It can be certainly brought up in other cases, but I don't know if it's binding. I know it's not binding. Well, it's binding if, you know, people try to refer to it or if it gets appealed and goes higher up and it then they change it. could go higher up. Yeah. 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 It would have to be appealed before it would become uh, binding. I, I, as, I, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. What am I saying? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, was there something in here about licking things? Did I see that? Or yes, there is. I... Yes, there is. Okay. Well, Karsten I'm put it checking. in. I did not put it in. <laughs> Who wants to take ownership besides Karsten? Uh, I can explain it. I read it. <laughs> I did the homework. So, Car Karsten, Karsten thought it was a it, it was a cure for my missing Taco Bell. That you could lick. That I could get this device that would simulate the flavor of my bean and cheese burrito. Because it has three little pistons there that mix various flavors. What is he based reading? On what is he know. reading that he would find? <laughs> the, this lickable screen can recreate almost any taste or flavor without eating food. Now, see, I need that. I need that. Uh, this is, of course, from where Where do you think? What country do you think would be doing this? Yep. Sweden. Meiji Japan. University in Japan. Yeah. Yep. They've invented what is being described as a taste display. The, the, folks, don't pass around the taste display. I'm just saying. I'm just looking at this. I'm like, this looks like licking a live battery and something you should <laughs> exactly. not. It's like what you prank people with. <laughs> um, it's five different sensors that can trigger five different tastes on a user's tongue. We all know sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. The yeah. Japanese believe there's umami. A I believe flavor. I believe in the Japanese umami. I believe in umami. Delicious. Mm. Um, so this could be interesting. I mean, think about it like you're eating something that's good for you and healthy. Sorry, I didn't mean to. And then to you just lick noise. this on the side. This is, uh, there's the synthesizer. They've got a sweet gel, a salty gel, an acidic gel, a bitter gel, and an umami gel. <laughs> just injects MSG right to your tongue. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to call foul on this because as everybody knows, <laughs> yes. if you don't smell it, you can't taste it. These are, these five flavors do not compose the entirety of these, of the taste sensorium. He's going to launch into a wine snob thing in a minute. No, it's true. Hold your nose and taste something. You might know it's bitter, salty, sweet, or sour, but you don't know it's delicious. You don't know what it is. That's why COVID-19 is such a horrible disease. You lose I think your it's because it kills of, people. Oh, that too. That too. I'm just saying. Um. It could be, but honestly, if I can't taste something, kill me now anyway. Okay. Um, bleep burp says and you can't smell salt, so there. Okay, yes, you would know it's salty, but you wouldn't know it's a no, it's a fine coquille Saint Jacques without the smell. <laughs> no, but like in acidic things, you can actually taste without the smell too. You taste acidity. You don't. You taste one of those five, four or five. I don't know if you could. I don't. You might sense umami. I don't think you taste umami, but anyway, then you know, umami or umami. So Magic Leap's not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. Raised 300, who would give them $350 million at this point? Uh, they were about to fire everybody. SoftBank. <laughs> yeah, probably. Was it Soft? No. Who was it? No, I'm, that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, uh, well, it was, actually, that's an interesting point because it was people who had already put money in. I was about to say, people who already invested the crazy yeah, amounts of money. Right. The $2.6 billion. Hey, good for them for using a Warren Act filing as a way to talk about something. I love it. Oh, you business reporters are crazy. What's the Warren Act? Is that Elizabeth uh, Warren? No, 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 no. The Warren, Warren. Act. W-A-R-N. It's a Warren filing. It says oh. it's the Workforce 
every state's workforce commission requires you to oh, yeah, file yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, before yeah. laying people off. Yeah. So the who is unknown uh, or the why. A key healthcare company may be involved, according to TechCrunch. And you know that TechCrunch has the sources, Brian Heater writing. Whatever the case, the company is withdrawing the warn notice because they were going to lay off the rest of the staff. Uh, so apparently they are not going to lay them off. They're moving to Enterprise, though, as you can tell on the website. No more flying whales. You that know, makes sense. We talked There's about a... this on a Twit uh, some time ago, th that really the issue is what Magic Leap's trying to do is not the kind of thing VC was invented for. It's long-term blue sky research and it needs a lot of money over a long period of time with no pressure to produce to and that's what that is what vc was built for really yes i thought it was vcs to, I funded it was things like intel money. oh no vcs uh, yeah, vcs had VC a versus, versus private equity no vcs were created to do seven to ten year fund really? life cycles so, yes is that what they are yeah. today no, VCs have changed okay. a lot. The good ones, there's are, are still good ones there, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're... Yeah, because really, uh, it, was, it would be imprudent to think that Magic Leap was going to create something in a few years. This is a hard problem, and you need to throw a lot of money at it to solve it. And they had some very good technology, but they had a hard time making it small and, you know, usable. Yeah. Um, this is the, the conversation, by the way, was all about Apple's AR and VR ambitions and why they might be a better steward of this because they have a lot of money and they have a, long t a little bit longer term outlook. Traditionally, you know, I think of Bell Labs, for instance, uh, or Xerox Park, where comp these large companies would always devote a certain amount of their money to blue sky R&D because they knew in the long run it would, it would give them some benefits. That's Do we part think of there's ever going to be a building. VR business? Um, no, there will be. Um, I don't think it's going to be huge consumer business for a while. I think we'll see, you'll see things in gaming. It's actually quite successful in industrial right now, both AR and VR. So training people in VR is something that's done and actually putting VR headsets on workers is also done today. So Karsten says, if you pair the lickable screen with the digital smell interface <laughs> then you gotta get this boy back into an office then you're cooking with gas i hope not because what if those things they look a little iffy what if they spark <laughs> <laughs> well actually the, the beauty the of this standard, is you don't have to cook at all just simulates right. eating wouldn't fool me for very long Let's take a little break, and then uh, we have uh, the... Well, should I... You know what? Let's be crazy. Shall I call me crazy? Should we do the change log? Sure. It's time for Jeffrey, the Google... The Google change log. The change log. Very disappointing. Very disappointing to report. The original Google Home... If you've got one, save it, put it away, put it in your Christmas basement because it's no longer available on the Google Store. Could this be the sign, the end, as Rita El Corey writes in Android Police, the end of a cylindrical era? Could this be a sign that uh, Google has something better? They w it was selling for $99 in the U.S. store. The no longer available notice showed up 12 hours ago. Same in Canada, same in Japan. That's not a change. That's just a warning about a change that's soon to come. But I thought it was still appropriate. For the Google change log, Google Messages preparing end-to-end -end encryption for RCS messages. This is that technology that no phone company seems to want, but Google's really pushing because it would give them parity with Apple's messages. And, man, if you had end-to-end -end encryption... Now, how much would you pay? This comes from 9 to 5 Google. Uh, they're looking at a dog food build of Google Messages version 6.2, which has end-to-end -end encryption settings in the, um, in, the, in the settings page. That's, I think that's fantastic. 
That's fantastic. I'd like to know what kind of encryption they're going to use, but we'll find out. More to come. Google's going to make wheelchair accessibility more prominent in Maps. So that's a good idea. Using its new Accessible Places feature, a mode that when toggled on will more prominently show where you can get in if you have mobility issues. It, when Accessible Places is switched on in Maps, a wheelchair icon would indicate an accessible entrance, and you'll be able to see if the place has accessible seating. The next time you go complain about these technology companies, look at this. They I know. That's fantastic. Yes, yeah, so turn it's on amazing. it. amazing. Yeah, I think that's great. Right. 130 million wheelchair users worldwide, you know, of which 30 million reside in the U.S. And it built it using uh, crowdsourcing, using the, the local guide volunteers, who, uh, by the way, I'm one of. I mean, I, I didn't realize this, but, you know, I often get asked by Google, oh, can you tell us a few things about this place? Almost always accessible. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Always. That is always a question. Yep. And is this place good for families? That's another popular yep. one. I, I like to answer those. If I, I know too. the answer, yeah. Is there parking? That kind of thing. So we're all local guides now. I think that's great. We were doing good things. We didn't even know it. Uh, Google Maps has also added a tool for donations and online classes during quarantine. It also lets shops list, list special hours for seniors, which is great. I don't know why they always make the special hours for seniors like 6 a.m. <sighs> Because yeah, old Gramps people get up early. Creepy. I like to sleep in. I beg they to gotta go to the bathroom five times. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna get dressed and go to Nama Yoga Lotus. What? Huh? Mom. <laughs> 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 well, apparently, that's one of the places that has special senior hours. Senior yoga coming soon. Uh, Google now lets businesses clarify what online services they offer during the pandemic. This will let uh, businesses communicate. They call it attributes, short notes that show up under business information in, uh, in the listing. So here it is, the Nama Yoga Lotus Studio, for instance, a real popular one with the Google folks. Uh, hours or services may differ, I guess, is what it says there. That's the note. They're also expanding a tool called Reserve with Google that lets people book appointments directly from a listing. I like that feature. So I could just press that Nama Yoga Lotus button and book online. You might why ask me why I'm picking on Nama Yoga Lotus. I don't know. It's just Google is, apparently. It's a yoga studio in Mountain View. I think probably Sundar goes there. That's be, that'd be my not guess. Not anymore. Oh, no, not anymore. Actually, you know, it's funny. Lisa and I were both talking about, boy, we really want to... Uh, do yoga classes. I guess we'll do them online, but there are a lot of yoga studios in uh, in Petaluma, but they're all closed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Google is now testing something interesting, voice confirmation for purchases when you make them through Google Assistant. So it's so <laughs> long pause. <laughs> um it's so the idea is you could it would know your voice. So it's had the ability to know your voice for quite some time. But right? it would use it for authentication in this case. But now that what's new here is the authentication. Yeah. And I will say that my Google still does not recognize my voice, although it does recognize my face. Yeah. So yeah. It seems a little <laughs> yeah, it's really creepy how well it recognizes my face. I might have the hub max. I could be like it could just get a little bit of me and it goes, boom, hello, Leo. It knows me, man. <laughs> it really knows me. Google Play Store tests showing popular gameplay videos with the game listings in the listings. This is something uh, Apple added a while ago, but Google, and I thought Google had it. I guess not, but they're going to have little videos so you can see the game, game play. Watch what, oh, well, this is new though. Watch others play. You can go to the YouTube, uh, what do they call that? Play with me, play along section. That's going to be linked right in the, Playlisting. That's interesting. Oh, do you use Gmail anymore? Do you still use Gmail? Yeah. Yes. So we all I, use Gmail. No, I don't use Gmail. Oh. No. He's do you use contrarian. Proton Mail? What do you use? No, I uh, use Fast Mail. I use oh. Gmail, but I get so much spam. Partly it was my fault because my Gmail address is Laporte at Gmail, and every freaking Frenchie in the world 
seems to think that they should send me spam. So I get a lot of French language spam. <laughs> but I also get a lot of stuff because this must be very common. Um, I get like reservations and confirmations and all sorts of stuff in French. And I think it is that it's like Francois Laporte at gmail.com, but they put a space between Francois and Laporte. So it just goes to me, Laporte. Um, I am basically the Gmail account for all Laportes worldwide. <laughs> this is why. Now you know why I no longer use Gmail. Anyway, uh, I'm going to defer to you, but apparently the quick settings menu is uh, now cha changed. And, uh, and pop. The settings page is just awful. It always Wait, the had quick settings. What is the yeah, quick, quick settings? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm like what? <laughs> All right, let me log into my Gmail. You well, can... no, I'm in my Gmail. Let's see. Okay, what... look for quick settings. I don't know what they're talking about when see? they say quick look. settings. Like the hamburger menu. Look, la porte. <laughs> one two five. Vous avez reçu reçu <laughs> un nouveau <laughs> message. I thought it was message nouveau. Message nouveau. Oh, it's it terrible. Is... Bad French. What, what language is this? But dankt voor und du naughty. Dutch, I think. Yeah, so apparently there's some Dutch Laports as well. Apparently donated uh, six euros. Nice job. Oh, Jesus. Nice job. You see why I don't oh, use this? Really? Well, you could just have a different address on Gmail. I Maybe I should. French days. Jusqu'à 20% de remise sur tout le site. Les French days. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do French people call it French days? French. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. So let me see here. Let me go to my settings. I don't see anything quick about them. Uh, where are these so-called quick settings? Huh. Huh. I don't see them. Ooh. <sighs> Maybe I don't have them yet. Maybe they know I'm not using it anymore. Well, anyway... G, uh, that was supposedly the biggest settings overhaul in years, but I don't see anything. And finally, YouTube's app gets bedtime reminders so you don't wake up slumped over your phone at 3 a.m. Nice headline, Ryan. <laughs> they have had break reminders in YouTube for a while, but now they will actually say, you know, you've been, it's time, maybe you should go to bed. Maybe you should go to bed. You have to turn this on, though, and you can snooze them. Set a bedtime reminder. Sign into YouTube, go to settings, and turn remind me when it's time for bed on. How does it know? Oh, you have to set, you have to have set the start and end time. I have I have more than one friend who gets warned by TikTok that without oh. having set anything, just, you've been on too long. Yeah, that's good. I think they should do that. And that, my friends is the Google change law. We've done our duty, my friends. Now it's time for me to tell you about Express VPN. You're home. Oh, oh, I am so mad at the United States Congress in the re, uh, in the um, in the authorization for the uh, Patriot Act. You know, they tried to put in a, a amendment to it that said the FBI can't just go looking at your internet history without a warrant. That failed in the Senate with by one vote. I think it's going to fail in the House, too. The FBI is going to be able to just go to your Internet service provider and say, I want to see everything uh, Stacey's been up to for the last, as long as she's been a customer. And they'll just hand it over. No warrant, no nothing. If ever there was a time to start using a VPN at home, I know you're thinking, well, I don't go out anymore. I don't need a VPN. I'm a member at a coffee shop. You might want to be using it at home. But let me tell you something. If you're going to use a VPN, it's got to be fast, right? You don't want to feel like you're suffering because you're using a VPN. And maybe more importantly, whatever privacy issues you're concerned about with your ISP, you're just kicking the can down the road. That new VPN provider, they're going to see everything you're doing too. So you got to pick a VPN with a good privacy policy. That's why I use ExpressVPN. By the way, their privacy policy has been verified by independent third-party audits. They even went so far as to create a new kind of VPN server. They call it Trusted Server. That when you, you go to ExpressVPN, you can do it in your phone, iPhone, Android. You can do it on the computer. You can do it in a lot of places, TV. When you press that big button that turns on the VPN... It spins up the trusted server at that VPN location just for you. That's yours. 
It runs in memory and only in memory, and it's sandboxed. It cannot write to hard drive, and then the minute you leave, it's gone. It's like footprints in the sands of time. It just Your presence is not recorded. That means ExpressVPN, not only do they not log your information, they can't. And I think that's really important. Not only can the FBI get it, but your ISP can legally sell information about your Internet visits to ad companies, and most of them do. ExpressVPN does not. Plus, they secure your browsing. They secure your Internet traffic. That's what a VPN does. And if you think, oh, well, don't worry, I use incognito mode. Incognito mode does not hide your surfs, surfing history from your uh, Internet service provider. They can still see every website you've ever visited. When you're home, when you're about and out, you should always use ExpressVPN. It's fast. It's easy. They have servers all over the world, 90-plus countries, which means you can use ExpressVPN to be in England, for instance, if you want to use the English Netflix and watch your Doctor Who series, or Japan if you want to watch anime series. It's pretty cool. Protect your online activity today with the number one VPN. Not only, not just me, CNET and Wired agree, ExpressVPN. And we've got a great deal for you. Less than seven bucks a month. Now, I know you say, well, I get it for free. No, 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 no. A free VPN service is worse than your ISP. They've got to monetize you somehow. That means they, they are watching you. They're even injecting ads in your stream, all sorts of stuff. Use the best. It's not expensive, and believe me, it's worth it. ExpressVPN.com slash twig. The best deal, you get a three months free when you sign up for a year. ExpressVPN.com slash twig. Twig. These guys are the best. That's what I use. That's what I recommend everybody use. ExpressVPN.com slash Twig. Thank you, ExpressVPN. Taco Bell is going to be an advertiser with Quibi. Oh, no, they already are, but they don't want to pay. Nah, would you want to? <laughs> They're revising deal terms with Quibi. <laughs> yeah. Revising yeah. deal terms. Because Quibi, eh, that's the short-form video thing created by Hollywood's uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg and Silicon Valley's Meg Whitman. Uh, they had ad deals worth $150 million at launch, uh, including Taco Bell. Pepsi uh, owns Taco Bell. Yum! Brands, Anheuser-Busch, Walmart. They, according to the Wall Street Journal, have all asked for changes to the contracts because of concerns about the service's low viewership or the impact of COVID on their businesses. And that's true. That's that's happened with us that advertisers are suffering. And uh, we've actually, what we've tried to do to many of our advertisers is give them uh, deals, you know, give them uh, value adds and things like that because we know their the business is hurting. And we want to keep them happy. Quibi had hoped to get, I think their plan was to have 16 million customers in three years. They wanted to get 7 million in the first year. You know, they're not doing bad as of last week, according to the journal, 4.2 million installations and 1.5 million users signing up to their free 90-day trial. We won't know for a couple of months. It started April 6th. So what is that? April, May, June, July 6th. We'll know if people stick around. We, this is what uh, the Quibi's head of advertising partnership said. We deeply value the commitments our advertising partners have made and are working in close partnership with them to learn and help them be successful on the platform. We're saying the same thing. Um, but, yeah. I, you know, it's tough for everybody right now. But Quibi, it's been tough. Today's the day, by the way, for HBO Max. Uh. <laughs> None right. of us, I, what is that well that's the I, I, i'll be honest with you that's the biggest problem they have not only what is it but should i pay for it or do i already have it is, well, that's yeah. exactly i was just mark harris who, who i worked with on entertainment weekly was just tweeting several hours in i have no idea how to get your on my tv well because i don't think you can because i think that they're making you pay another 15 dollars for hbo and if i want to watch anna kendrick well you tough tough noogies on you you fool you already paid us every month for years even though showtime is better so hbo max weirdly uh, despite coming out today is not available on roku or amazon devices which are dominant in the marketplace you can get it on apple tv you can get it on Chromecast. Um, but tell me if I'm wrong. If you already subscribed to HBO, 
You, you don't depends. get HBO Max. No, you don't get any deal. If you buy HBO a la carte with their HBO Now program, it will convert to Max. Probably already has. So it's the same price. You're you're just going to get... So that's for but people who buy is, it. I buy that, HBO. I, for, I, I do with my cable but company, get, but we don't get it. No. No. That's, it pisses me off. Unless you're with Spectrum. Are you with Spectrum? No. Uh, some cable companies, AT&T. Are you with AT&T? I'm with Fios. Verizon. Verizon. Yep. So this is the problem: is that many people are getting it for free because of side deals like AT and T. AT getting it for free. Spectrum, which is another well, AT and T owns HBO Max now. Oh yeah, that's right. They're all Warner <laughs> HBO. Well, then I, I bought the super killer Mondo AT and T on my Android phone, but I can't get it there. Oh, you should. No, 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 no. If you have an AT and T oh, phone, I know, but every no. So then they screwed me over on that. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to have to deal with AT and T right now. I just can't. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I'm yeah. in a pandemic. I can't do it. So it, it actually looks pretty good. They got a lot of lot of content. They All got the, friends. They got friends. They took it off Netflix, and they. Although I did see a, uh, I did see a, a survey of people asking them where could you watch this show, and it's people are so confused. It's just like I don't know. Isn't Friends? Uh, ne the, the survey said that people under a certain age all thought that Netflix created Friends. <laughs> They've been there so long. So it, HBO Max is the next Quibi. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I just think people, they've, they've got to get their branding and their whatever straight. I think they're trying to make it so, I, I think they're actually intentionally making it a little confusing so people will sign up for this thinking. Oh, Jeff, that, uh, Verizon Fios oh. is a partner. Oh, there you go. AT&T, so do I, I don't know. AT&T, <laughs> Cox, DirecTV, Hulu, Optimum, Spectrum, Verizon Fios, and YouTube TV and Comcast. But you still have to pay for it. No, at no additional it. cost. No, I don't get HBO Max on Hulu, do I? I don't know. Go to the HBO Max Help Center. Help! No. HBO Max. Dot com. You're right. It says here all of Verizon's existing FiOS customers yeah. subscribe to HBO or HBO Now will get immediate access to HBO Max at launch. So here, go, to, no this, extra cost. go to this help center, help.hbo max. Oh, yeah, yeah. Help centers are so in, helpful. Sign in via provider. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, geez, Louise, this is worse than the IRS. Uh, Okay, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. It might be another Quibi. The thing is, the difference is nobody wants to watch anything on Quibi. HBO Max, because they're owned by Warner, which is owned by NTT, they have a lot of content. And they have all the HBO content. And I mean, I you know what? I, I think this is where the value would lie. If you cut the cord, you got rid of your cable television, and you bought HBO Max over the top and maybe Netflix and a, one or two other things over the top. And then you might be happy. I'm not paying for a lot of things. I'm trying to remember. So yeah. Amazon prime, am I paying for it? No, sort of. So that's one Hulu. I'm paying for it. Netflix paying for it. Disney plus not paying for it. Cause it came with Verizon. Right. Came with Verizon. Right. You see, this says, this says I'm going through the process. To start your free trial. I'm not trusting this. Yeah, I know. That's going to be a problem. I'm not trusting this. That's going to be a big problem. You may have to have HBO for it. I do so have in, HBO. Oh, well, why do you want HBO Max again? No, it's because different. it has it's, programming HBO doesn't HBO have. HBO Plus. That's what's so absurd about this. So cancel normal HBO and get this HBO. Is it the same price? Actually, that's not a bad Probably idea. not because trying to cancel it all, I got a package on Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so probably really, can't oh, just Oh, you're on Files. HBO. So, because I just I just buy these things through Amazon and at, like if I want to watch a show, right. I just subscribe for a right. month for like, right. and then I cancel at the end of the month. Right. It's very easy. You need to cut the cord, Jeff. It says build through Verizon. I'm nervous about this. I think I just signed up for 15 bucks a month and I'll get it. Ugh. Well, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I can't. No, it's too late. I rant. just did it. I just. I'm just oh, you know, no. I'm going to rant. I'm going to rant. All right. We're going to wind up. 
We're going to wind up the show giving her a headache. with my last free story of the month on Medium. I am giving this to you <laughs> as a gift. Of course, the month's almost over. But uh, every type of Zoom, this is actually from Jeff Jarvis. Every type of Zoom call participant illustrated by cats. This is the tenderly. You know what? I am going to pay for, I am going to subscribe to medium just because tenderly because it's about recipes animals humans reason books and vegan life and fun that sounds great and it is fun this is jack shepherd's article there are are you ready here are some of now this is a visual thing but i'll describe it there is of course everybody knows the one who's too close to the camera mr muffin genuinely believes you can only hear him if he puts his entire face into the camera when he speaks, and there's a very close-up picture of a kitty cat in Zoom. Not the least bit concerned with looking bad on Zoom. Let's no. Make that clear. That's why cats are perfect. Cats are good. They don't care. Actually, it's quite a pretty cat. I like those eyes. The cutest little pinkish nose. These are good photos. Wants to kill you. Yeah, this one. So he used uh, like uh, stock photos and stuff like that. But uh, well, well done, well done. Oh, very well done. The one who doesn't understand in lighting, no matter what time of day or night your meeting is, you can be certain Cookie is going to be lit in a way that is appropriate for telling a ghost story, but very little else. By the way, this is why we don't have a Karsten cam because <laughs> that's what Karsten <laughs> looks like. Ooh. On the Ooh. no, he knows it. He sits in front Karsten of a big bright cat. window. Yeah, his eyes don't glow. It's a little kitty with eyes glowing. That's well, I'll bet they do. I'll bet they do. I'll bet he has special lenses that hide it from us. Yes. I bet they glow. Yes. Karsten is definitely yeah. a Lovecraft demon. The yes. one who got out, just got out of the shower. <laughs> Ossington says she was 10 minutes late to me because of technical difficulties, which is true if you take te technical difficulties to mean waiting for the conditioner to sit for three minutes. And there's a very wet little kitten. Doesn't look too happy either about being wet. Do you bathe your cats? No. I don't have a cat. Terrible idea. I don't think you're supposed to bathe them. I Look learned that lesson. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that poor cat. How many cat. scratches did you get? Oh, man. There were two of them. Dusty and Poppy. They We just got them, and I thought, well, they're kind of dirty. I'm going to throw them in the... Because I didn't, I didn't know. I only had dogs. <laughs> I'm going to throw them in the tub. <laughs> Yow! That's, that's painful. The one who refuses to use video but has, like, the world's most glamorous headshot. You know this guy. This guy is a good-looking guy, but he won't put a, the video on on Zoom. He just leaves his, you know, because you get a still a headshot. Adonis, Adonis says he can't get the... Did you put a headshot of yourself up on Zoom? I haven't bothered. Uh, yes, I do have a picture, yeah. It's a very, it's a nicely lit picture, just like Adonis is. <laughs> that is one pretty cat. His eyes match the ivy. Aw. Oh, I don't like these naked cats, though. What is that, a Manx? I don't and they know. never do anything about the naked cat. Cleopatra's never mentioned. She's just there. She's glaring. just there, staring us down, God, scaring scary. the bejesus out of us. <gasps> she looks like a demon. The only one, I'm the one with the wacky background. There's no way Garfunkel's paying any attention to what anyone is saying because he changes his background every five minutes and looks around to see who's noticed. Her, His background, pretty gray cat, comes from the movie Cats. Oi. Midnight. The one with random family member cameos. We've all seen this one. Princess is clearly working very hard, and it's unclear what her husband does and why he needs to do it with his shirt off. <laughs> there he is, staring over his shoulder. You know, you never tire of cat fic pictures, do you? You don't. You don't. You no. just don't. No. I prefer puppy pictures, but I do enjoy a good cat hey. picture. I'm there's, just saying. I prefer, but I also... Uh, I am pretty into all this animals. This is, by the way, not a Manx. I'm being informed by the chat room. This is a Sphinx cat. The hairless cat. And then there's the one who can't get the camera placement right. <laughs> we have this a lot on all of our shows. The kitty cat Yes, just the top that's, of the head. That's me just as a cat. Just the top of the head. And the oh, one. this is this is actually a good audience to ask. I will ask you too, since y'all are cat fans. Yeah. I'm on a walk with my husband two yeah. days ago, yeah. and this cat just comes running up the street. It's just, it sees us. It's not running like in a, I'm chased by something. It's just like trotting up the street, and it sees us, and then it starts trotting towards us. So I bend over, and I stick my hand down to Aww. give him the opportunity to like either sniff or rub, because it's clearly coming directly for us. Yeah. 
and to walk by the cat yeah. felt rude. And what happened? My husband, he said that is horrifying and you should never do that because, you know, it's a strange cat. But I'm kind of like, it's a cat and no, it acknowledged no. my existence. You must, you must take a moment yeah, to no, say, you're right. what do you need, cat? Your husband is heartless cat hater. He's no, 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 no. He's cat phobic. <laughs> it's clearly he's cataphobic. He's just... <laughs> He wouldn't, he wouldn't, I mean, if it was a dog, he wouldn't do it for a dog either. Well, He's just I know. like. I wouldn't do it for a dog because dogs will. Dog, no. Dogs, dogs could attack you. There's, there, but a cat, I don't, I think it's rare that a cat would come at you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, cats, cats normally are like, they don't care about you at all. Well, they want okay, a little just, head scratch and that's it. That's all they want. A little yeah. head scratch. No, I think that's okay. fine. Yeah. I felt like that was yeah. the appropriate yeah. cat etiquette, cat etiquette. The thing to remember, though, Stacey, as, not, as a non-cat owner, I think it's important for you to understand, is if the cat were a little bit bigger, it would eat you. <laughs> That's probable. But because it's so small, you're fine. It could still bite you. I mean, I, I give it's it not, the back No, no, no. It knows, the cats aren't stupid. They're not going to bite you unless they can eat you. Okay. But honestly, if, if the cat were a bigger cat, it would just eat you. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, but they're just—they're not dumb. They're just—you know—I'm not going to bite you for no reason. What, what's the? There's no percentage in that. <laughs> do you have a thing this week, Ms. Stacy? I do. Um, it is across the room. So hold on one second. The only thing oh, I, I would worry about if I were Stacy, because she has all those Bluetooth gadgets. We talked about it yesterday on Security Now. There's a new Bluetooth attack <laughs> called Bias. All right. That means Bluetooth is forever broken and insecure. What? Nothing. <laughs> I missed whatever is this, whatever downside to Bluetooth there is happening. No, no here. point in worrying about it at this point. Um, I yes. Okay, here's my thing. This is oh, I haven't opened it yet because I am moving, as you guys know, and so I bought something to make my um, what's it called? Uh, breaker box smart, and so this is going to allow me to. Uh, see what energy is being consumed by certain appliances, but eventually it will also ouch, be able to um, give me insights about how I should be using my electricity. Oh, and this is cool. Theoretically, it could one day communicate with my utility, but that's not I've happening. always wondered how these things know what device is using the electricity because you put it at one one place, right? Or you don't put it on all the yes. devices. So, yeah. so this is what it is. This is the Wiser Energy System by Schneider Electric. Okay. La, la, la. Okay. And these things, this is to be installed by a professional electrician. I should also mention oh, that. Oh, absolutely. This is not, Don't mess with This is not something you should do. <laughs> Cats may not kill you, but electricity will. These are the little things that go into the breaker box, I believe. I believe, Leo, I have a friend who did research on this. Every appliance has a uh, signature. Oh, did I not answer? Yes. Oh, Every you're appliance kidding. has a unique signature. Like a how Mac address? Electricity. It's, no, uh, just, it's just a pattern. The way it uses electricity. And they're all unique? Yep. Well, I don't know that every June oven is different from every other June oven, but June ovens are recognizable. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah. A That's friend of mine who's an electrical so engineering cool. prof at, at Rutgers did work on this. Yeah, I've always wondered because you see these devices – so this yes. is the this is from now how um, they gather that data. I don't know. They pull it from. They sit on your breaker box. They're attached to either individual circuits or they're attached at the like junction of the breaker box. Like this one. Yeah. See, there it is. Well, that thing's actually yeah. in the breaker box. It's yeah, you don't panel. want to do that. Yeah. Uh -uh. yeah. No, I'm not uh -oh. touching this thing. I I will wire a light switch or an outlet. How, how much is not. this? Uh, I don't remember. I um, like this idea. Yeah, maybe when we get the electrician out, we would get one of these. I think that's a very cl – so it tells you what's using all the juice. Yeah, Cause and we it have can a make lot some of policy which, Yeah, because we have mysteries. We use a lot of electricity. I can't quite figure out, is it because of the computers? Is it because of the lights? What is it what, – you know, what is using – um, so another company that does this and wise, uh, wise actually, or wiser actually uses their technology, their algorithm technology is sense and sense also makes a physical device. So you could go with either of these. Oh, okay. Um, 299. There you go. Yeah. So plus installation. Yes. Plus your electrician. So those or, things clip on to. Yeah. You just put those on circuits so. somewhere. 
Yeah, that doesn't look too dangerous. I'm not going to touch it. It does need to be professional. The, normally, I'm like, go try it out. You can do it. But for this one, no, <laughs> no don't. No, 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 when you open up the box, uh-uh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I open up that box all the time. When your breaker gets thrown, you don't you open that up? But you don't take the cover yes. off the box exposed yeah, to all you the wires. Oh. You don't play around with the wires, do you? No. You just no. flip the switch. Yeah. <laughs> and then when it jumps again, I put a penny in it or a little something to jam it. So, okay. Nice. Schneider. You said that so you would scold him, Stacy, because you're not supposed to do that. I know. You're supposed oh. to yell at him now. I just like I, I wasn't that. paying attention. No, I know. I'm sorry. Okay. I was as, reading as some usual. of the comments. He was baiting no, I, you, and you didn't, you didn't take the bait. I didn't. From Schneider. He used to be baited. The electronics. Jeff, you have a number for us? Yeah, sure. So I saw one. You know, I always put in more than one in case uh, they get stolen because uh, or I need more than one. So I put this one, 25 years of CNET. Well, that's kind of okay. I'll do better than that. No, but, and you I know, through. I do want to mention that we talked about that fairly extensively on Sunday because Lindsay Turrentine, uh, who is Senior Vice President for Content Strategy at CNET, was on Twit. And she told us she was about to do this because it's 25 years. And right. I told her my story working as the fourth employee of CNET in the early 90s before they. There we go. Yeah. So, you know, I, that, they're, they're, that was, a, if you can watch to it and, and see that. But yeah, that's kind of interesting. So I thought years. that was kind of worthwhile. Yeah. That was good. And so Been I thought it was all right. Yeah. Leo was a connection. But then, then only five years later, telling us a lot about this whole world, what started on this day today? Ftcompany.com. Oh, wow. Oh, Pud's little uh, adventure. Pud. Yeah, so Pud uh, Facebook today that it was 20, 20 years ago today. I have them. I have his mug that somewhere. That is so cool. And it's so funny that 25 years ago, CNET, oh, wow, the internet, everything's going to be amazing. It's all going to change. Then only five years later, yeah, it's all left. <laughs> well, his, you know, and I actually asked Pud about this. I was talking to him about it because... His theory was every few years he wanted to create a site that he would set it up and it would just run itself and make him money <laughs> because right. the way right. Eft Company worked is people would send in memos from their messed up company and it would become content on the site and everybody would say, oh. But also talked about how he made a success out of it. So he launched it 20 years ago. But one of the things he would do is he'd go around to forums and other uh, sites and say, I can't believe what this jerk is doing on Eft Company. Can you believe? How does he get away with publishing those memos? Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant marketing. Pud's he, great. He is a, he's he's great. a great guy. Very smart. Uh, what's he doing? I wonder what he's doing. He's in New York now. He's a father. Who would have thought? He's married and father. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Philip, but, what's his uh, real name? Philip? Kaplan. Kaplan, that's right. Well, that's neat. Uh, American entrepreneur, it lists him as. Um, hmm. There's his. Oh, he also baby. did Adbright. Adbright, wow. Yeah, which he founded in 2004. Wow. He joined Charles River Ventures as an entrepreneur in residence in 2009. <laughs> Here's a picture of him with Martin Sargent and Kat Schwartz at the Cloud Nine bar. These are all tech TV people around the year 2000 when he's first starting F Company. <laughs> I guess I do know him. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's 2011, pretty funny. he formed ADHD Labs, an incubator for web and iPhone apps. Um, its company, Tiny Letter, was acquired by MailChimp in 2011. Then he found oh, yeah, the Tiny Letter. He's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. And, and again, he's the most unassuming guy there is. Oh, he's great. And but he even said, you know, my goal was always just to create these these little yeah. little income it's like generators. A car wash. Yeah, and then you yeah. walk off and they just keep spinning off money and you do the next thing. So yeah. quite a smart guy. Well, folks, we've come to the end of this fabulous program and only an hour shorter than the fabulous <laughs> Joe Rogan experience. Oh, we can do it. We can deal with Leo. Can we do another we can hour. Do it. Make Stacy suffer. Rogan. <laughs> Her, That's like, why I, he's worth so much more than me. I'll tell you right now, he does a longer podcast. He has time on his hands. Well, and, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. Do, they smoke weed, though, during the podcast and they like that drink and stuff, no. right? No, you know what? Uh, 
huge respect for the guy. Uh, but it's a, it's a culture I don't get. It's a bro. It's a manly culture. I'm not manly, yeah. and um, and it's it's a, it's I just don't get. It. My son loves it, but I just don't get it. I'm not. You know, I don't go to the gym. <laughs> I don't go. <laughs> I just, that's not my. I don't understand it. In fact, I'm uh, to be honest, I'm terrified by it. I'm intimidated by it. So, the culture. Or yes, the fact that it's kind of masculine. No, I just don't want to hang out in it. I always shrivel, and if just the fact that Joe Rogan's five foot seven and he still scares me, tells you something. Uh, it's okay. just not my thing. I got I got in trouble with somebody. last week on the show. I said that he was the PewDiePie of podcasting, yeah. and somebody came on and oh, they they scolded me that how can I say anything against him? What he really is is the Howard Stern of podcasting because he's really doing Howard Stern would object to that. Well, but he's doing for podcasting what Stern did for satellite radio. And, and I've had arguments personally with Stern. Uh, he made fun of podcasting. Oh, he he's never going to make money on it. Everybody really hates it. And I wonder what he thinks. Even though he he made more, he's got to respect the money that Rogan got, even though Stern makes a lot more. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure that's the first thing that comes to Stern's mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I make a lot more. I win. I win. Oh, hey, it's been fun. You guys, I like hanging out with you two. I like hanging out with you two. With Higginbotham Plus, we got, we got nowhere to go. We got nothing better nothing to, to do. Nothing to do. So here we are. Wait, no, I've, I've got better things I can do. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I have go fun do with them. y'all, but go eventually do I do need to leave. And, Stacy and, you know, on IoT.com. Don't forget to sign up. She's got a, another uh, event coming up next month. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, is it Stacy on IoT.com slash COVID? Is that where you go? Uh, that's where my last one. This one, one is Stacy on IT, Stacy on IoT.com slash edge. And edge. It's all about right. machine learning at the edge. Woo, 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 woo. Woo. That's uh, a couple of weeks away, June 11th. So make sure you get over there. It's free. But I think it's great she's doing these, and I want to really, uh, really yep. encourage everybody to participate. Great and people. if you want to see the COVID one, it's at the COVID link. So right. if you did, if you missed it and you're like, I really want to know this. Oh, no. <laughs> There's my little pop-up. Isn't that great? I I already oh, subscribed. Oh, we need to update it. We have almost, we have like 15,000 subscribers I bet you now. do. And I'm not dismissing it because I don't think it's the greatest IoT newsletter in the world. I already subscribe. Stacy on IoT.com. And you should also listen to her fabulous podcast that she does with Kevin Tofel, a contract employee. That's, <laughs> that's the IoT cast. Uh, Stacy on IoT.com. Thank you, Stacy. Go enjoy your uh, queso and your planning. Jeff Jarvis. I think I'm getting ready for a man bun, don't you? You? See, I got a haircut. Oh, look, he could do it. You could do it. He, he and looks it's like fluffy. a little do troll. Do it now, huh? You look like Bam you Bam. Nice white hair. Your white hair is very white. I, I do have good hair. A, it's, it is one. A top when I'm in, in the makeup chair at MSNBC, they always say, oh, you have great hair. Always. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice of them. They never say you have good things to say, but they say you have <laughs> Your good hair. Your hair is excellent. The director of the Townite Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate That's School of Journalism. That's the important part. You, you can stop I, that. I That's gave it important. the emphasis. The Craig yep. Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the Craig Center. Craig watches us. When Hi, we come Craig. back, we need to get Craig on the show. We'll I'd love to get, to get Craig on the on. show. Um, thank you, Jeff, for being here. You can read his writings on Medium and BuzzMachine.com. And what was that? What's the new place that you put your thing? Oh, bit.ly slash COVID Twitter list is my, is my oh, list of COVID. Oh, we got to do that. That's right on the right on the screen there, bit.ly dot, B-I-T dot L-Y slash COVID Twitter list. I, that is, I have to say, I have TweetDeck open. In fact, I'll prove it right now by opening TweetDeck, and you'll see column two on my TweetDeck Ooh. is your list right there. Ooh. And that, I have to say, that is one thing that makes uh, Twitter pretty awesome. It, it is pretty amazing to watch the scientists yeah. at science. Yeah. They're pretty, pretty yeah. wonderful. So I do, I do, I think that. And a lot of women and scientists of color who you do not see enough of on, in TV and um, feature stories about male heroes of science. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's worth following. Thanks, mm -hmm. everybody. We do this show every uh, Wednesday about 1.30 Pacific. Every damn Wednesday. <laughs> every damn Wednesday. one <laughs> thirty Pacific. <laughs> That's uh, 4.30 Eastern. That's 20.30 UTC. The way you could watch that live would be to go to twit.tv slash live. There's a live audio and live video stream there. Actually, there are multiple of each. 
If you're watching live, go to the chat room, irc.twit.tv. Hang out there. There's a nice bunch of people chatting in the background about everything we're talking about. If you don't watch live, you should uh, get the on-demand version of the show. It's always available at twit.tv slash twig. That's the website. Or on YouTube or in your favorite podcast client. In fact, subscribing is probably the best thing to do. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Spotify, Slacker, Stitcher, everywhere you want to get us, you can. Subscribe to Twig. You'll have it the minute it's available. And if you do listen on demand, let me point out our great forum for asynchronous listening. It's at twit.community. Go there and you can participate in the conversation. Every show has an entry. Uh, and there's off, quite often uh, conversations. Some of our hosts pop in from time to time. I do as well. That's twit.community. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, where each week I'm joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and a rotating crew of Android journalists, developers, and enthusiasts, where we talk about the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. You can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash AAA or find the show in your podcatcher of choice. That's All About Android.